Juan, so sorry I didn't, but Richard, um, the uh, fire annual general meeting is this evening, so he's always late to council on that night, so he said he'd be late coming on. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't see his message, uh, Dylan. Oh, sorry, he relayed that to me, but I thought he had to you. Oh, no, he did not. No. We're live now. We are live. Good. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this, the first meeting of Mahone Bay Town Council in 2021. Uh, I, I would note that all of the members of council, save one, are currently here. Uh, Councilor Richard Now, who is also a fire chief, is involved in uh, fire department business at this time, and he is supposed to be joining us uh, later. So, uh, Council, you have an agenda that was emailed out to you. Uh, we would uh, ask for uh, a motion to approve the agenda or to approve it with an amendment. What is your wish? Councillor Carver. Yes, Your Worship, I would like to um, request uh, Council's approval to add uh, notice of motion to new business. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Can we get a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So move. Councillor Burdick moves, Councillor Carver seconds. All in favor? Motion's carried. Let's go to the minutes of our last, uh, last most recent two meetings. The first is a special meeting that was held on December the 8th. What is your wish? Mayor, I'd move that we approve the minutes of the meeting on, of December 8th. Uh, and that's the special meeting um, yes. as, as submitted. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Carver? On the question, all in favor? Thank you, motion's carried. Let's go to the regular meeting of December 8th. What I'm happy to, happy to move that one along as, as well. That's the meeting of the regular meeting of December the 8th. Yes, it is indeed, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Carver, moved and seconded, approve as presented. All in favor? That motion is carried as well. Let's, we have no delegations or individuals tonight who will speak to council. Let's go to our correspondence file for action items. Mr. Hyde, did you wanna to speak to the region six piece? Uh, yeah, certainly I can. Um, so this is an annual process. Region 6 is our waste management region, so not to be confused with the Municipal Joint Services Board, which actually is our um, contractor, deal, you know, uh, intermunicipal dealing with the actual collection of garbage. Region 6 is coordination, um, uh, education, uh, enforcement, recycling program, credits, and that kind of thing. Uh, town's a member, everyone from West Hance down to Barrington. Um, so this is a budget approval request according to the intermunicipal. Uh, all of the members are to consider and approve the budget by uh, mid-March. Um, Mahone Bay's share proportionate to our population is quite small. Um, so we're, we're talking about less than $1,000. And my recommendation would be that we not wait on our budget approval process that this is a, a small enough item that council uh, proceed to approve it. Thank you. Can we get a motion? I'll, Councilor Carver? I'll make that motion that we approve that, that funding. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Kangata seconds? No, I, I, I have a question just uh, for my own understanding. Okay, let's, we, uh, Councilor Wilson will second it. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor, please. And I know it's not a big, big number, but when I was looking at the, I guess the agreement that's in there, basically uh, the process that we're going through now is uh, a rubber stamp process based on the agreement. Because if we, if we disagree, if we don't approve this, they will still, um, uh, I guess it, it, it's considered that the budget will be passed anyways, 
whether we agree or disagree. Is that is, mm -hmm. that's the case, right? Uh, yeah, it stipulates that um, a majority of the area represented, which, you know, Mohombe uh, is far from that. So uh, most likely uh, we would not be able to affect the uh, the adoption of the budget. Yeah, so uh, from, a, I guess, a democratic pers democracy perspective, that sort of seems very, very odd, but I just wanted to understand whether that's, is, is that the way it's been for a long time or there was a change at some point to, to make it that way? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I can respond to, to the best of my knowledge, because, uh, you know, this is a longstanding arrangement. Um, we're required to be a part of one of these waste management regions. So, um, you know, the fact that that at the end of the day, we're going to get billed uh, is, is because we are obligated by the province to be a part of one of these organizations. So I think as long as there have been waste management regions, we've been a part of it. And uh, I don't I don't really think we have a choice. And the price is certainly right. Helpful, yeah. that's helpful, thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Motion's carried. Let's go to item 4.2, uh, the Health Services Foundation request. I think CAO, this is the one that was talking about a copy of the uh, huge painting that Mr. Mattias did for part of our, our centennial celebration. Yes, uh, so I, I have a vague recollection that Council has heard the suggestion before. Mr. Uh, Matthias himself, Peter, when he did the artwork, he uh, provided the town with a, a small um, kind of like original design, a, a, a small scale version, early sketch version that is framed. And it's been in the council chambers, so it hasn't been hung up, it's just been you know in the council chambers. Um, and he suggested to the Health Services Foundation that uh, they contact the town to see about auctioning that off as a charitable donation. And uh, I think it was discussed in the past because Peter has suggested it, um, but I'm not, I couldn't find, uh, and apologies if other people could point me to a date, but I couldn't find anything on the record saying that the council had rendered an official decision on the, in this regard. Mm. Um, as, as I say, it, you know, it hasn't been displayed, but we're currently going through a process to do some fixing up in the office. And if council's inclined to, to find a place to display it, you know, following the renovations, I'm sure that we could do. Uh, but at the same time, the Health Services Foundation, I think in their letter, um, they cite that it could be a pretty valuable donation to their cause. So um, that's the background information. And I think when we talked about it in the past, there was a, uh, a question as to whether or not a copy of it could be produced to be sold uh, for that purpose in that it did represent a, and will become a more significant piece uh, for the town. However, you're quite right. There was no formal decision uh, that I can recollect at that time. So council, Councillor Feeney. <clears throat> Mayor, just to provide a little, you know, color on the, um, um, the, the conversation, which I think was in an open sitting of council, if I recall. And it was really, I think it really was around two points. It was the, the fact that the, um, the draft copy or the, the model copy would, was, a, was a town asset. And, you know, like any asset divestiture, um, you know, municipal asset would have to go through a process. So it's, you know, there's more, it's more to it than that just, it's a surplus asset. Um, and, the, and the second issue was really around um, the context of, of it being uh, part of the centennial celebration and being something that, while today may look like a copy and what may be, you know, something that's sort of less important and we're going to find a way, you know, years down the road, you know, that, that piece of that artist's rendition of the of the mural um, may become something much more of much more historical um, uh, importance, and and I think that you know to to Dylan's point when the you know when the renovations are done and it's appropriately displayed, I think it's going to be a terrific um, centerpiece for uh, any uh, for the town hall, mm -hmm. and um, I think that was really the theme be behind your you know council's conversation. Um, and it would be my opinion that we should craft a letter back to 
the Health Services Foundation and indicate that um, while we aren't in a position to proceed with that, that request, you know, obviously we uh, um, can take into consideration their fundraising efforts and that can be addressed through the normal course of our grants process that will happen in the new budget year. Thank you. Councilor Burdick? Yeah, I think uh, that often in these cases with an original work of art, it's a kind of a confusing thing where there's also a draft uh, of, the, of the final work. My suggestion is that because in the letter, they also mentioned a copy being acceptable, that maybe uh, Peter Matthias can do a really limited edition, maybe of just one um, of, the, of the piece to auction off. And it would be noted on the piece because prints are noted to be in an edition, that it is an edition rather than the original mm -hmm. draft. And that might be a solution if he wants mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if Thank we you. want to do it, I guess. Councilor Kerber. Uh, yes, I uh, support Councillor Feeney's uh, comments um, about the value to the town. Um, and if, if there were, were a decision to donate it for fundraising purposes, I would prefer to see it being donated to a local it, within the town mm -hmm. um, rather than, I mean, I, I, I fully support and would love to support the the hospital foundation, but with this particular item, I really feel it belongs to the town okay. and in the town. Is there a motion working in here somewhere? <laughs> um, well, well, Mara, I mean, I'd be prepared to make a motion to direct staff to respond to the letter and indicate that we would not, we're not in, we're not in a position to proceed with that request. Okay. But you would mention the opportunity that may present itself during budget time to support the foundation. Yes. Okay. Do we have a Councillor Carver? Do we have a seconder? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. On the question. All in favor? Motion's carried. Okay, thank you. Let's go to our correspondence information items. What is the wish of council? Councillor Burdick? Uh, to receive the documents. And file and them. them? And file them also. Okay. Motion to receive and file. Do we have a seconder? Deputy Mayor Kangata. I can hear former Deputy Mayor Noss saying, yes, yes, file from off in the distance. Okay, on the question, motion to move and file. All in favor? That motion is carried as well. Let's go to our, oh, staff reports to council. Mr. CAO, are you going to screen share with us for these? Yeah, I can certainly do that. Um, just one second here. With the main report to council. So normally with this one, I'll um, this is bring up any areas that people have questions about. The, yeah, this is the shorter one for the first meeting. So it's just the uh, tasks assigned section. But sometimes people have questions from the other sections. It's all in there. And uh, I'll just wait to see what questions are raised and then bring it up. Councillor Kerber. Uh, yes, in, in a written uh, correspondence with the, the CAO prior to the meeting, I asked whether there's a motion required with in respect to item four on the uh, staff report in 6.1. And is a motion required to schedule a meeting with the Mahone Bay District Fire Department Society? And I would like to make that motion that uh, council schedule a meeting with the, the uh, new, newly formed society yes. to uh, discuss the, the matter of uh, possible contributions to capital projects and also to follow up on an earlier um, request that uh, there be uh, some information provided on the relationship 
between the fire department and the town, just organizationally how that works. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my motion. That's your motion? Do yes. we have a seconder? I can't see everybody to see if somebody's seconding it, but. Oh, see, that's why I'm. Meryl. <laughs> off the screen sharing again. There you go. Meryl, I'll, I'll, I'll help move that along. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councillor Freeney will second. The motion is to uh, schedule the planned meeting with the newly reformed Mahone Bay Volunteer Fire Department Society. On the question. All in favor? Motions carried. Thank you. Back to you, CAO. Well, this time I'll just uh, I'll wait again, and I probably didn't even need to put it up there. Last time I should have just said this is the one about the, the fire department society, okay. but uh, yeah, if, any, if anybody needs me to, I'll put it back up or I can answer questions for belief. Is there any? Mr. Will, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple of questions um, and a comment, if I may. Um, I guess a question, first of all, is did we get a, I don't, I haven't got the report in front of me because I haven't quite figured out how to do, do two things at once on this screen, but uh, in there uh, in 15 and 16 was the, uh, the discussion of affordable housing as per our request for proposals. And as I recall, there were no, uh, there were there were no submissions for that. Um, I would just like to comment that, that one of the, I was a bit puzzled by that uh, request for proposals in the first place. It's, it, I, w I wasn't sure what we were hoping to accomplish because um, they're really, as far as I can never figure out, there's no such thing as affordable housing. There's really only such a thing as subsidized housing. Um, and the, the housing that uh, uh, Mr. Uden built down on Carol Lane being a case in point, that is a very complicated arrangement with the province that creates a front end subsidy for the capital cost of the building, which then translates into reduced rents. So asking for a proposal uh, in a kind of a general way is, I suspect, somewhat fruitless. Um, the other part of what I wanted to say about affordable housing is, uh, the question that came up to me at, uh, as I was going through all of this is, how much affordable housing do we think we should have in Mahone Bay? Um, by my count, and it's a very rough count, I will admit, but there are something like 70 housing units in town that could be classified as affordable in one way, shape or form, whether it's uh, the housing on Cherry Lane, the housing that, uh, is in the apartment building that Mr. Yoden built or some of the uh, less than pristine housing that we have in various places around town in uh, apartments that are above shops or in other places. Uh, 70, 70 units in a, in a town that has about 500 housing units is roughly 15%. And I, I just asked the question, how much more do we think we need um, Okay, um, the other thing I wanted to ask because I didn't see it there is uh, I asked in November if we could include in this report a, a, a comment on how much water we're losing uh, between Oakland Lake and the customers. And I'm wondering if, if there's a reason why we haven't been able to see that yet. Um, and that's I, I can respond to that one. Sorry, Kelly, I know it seems like it's been two months, but in, in practice, um, we haven't had the second report of a month yet. And so my intention would be that the second report, which is the one that has the stats, so January 28th, will include that. So that, oh, that's okay, perfect. We just didn't have a second meeting in December. So. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and the only other thing I was going to comment on in this whole report is it would... I don't know how anybody else feels about it, but to me, it would it would really benefit from a little bit of judicious editing um, because we get a lot a lot of the stuff that's in the report. I, this report is the same stuff I read back in December, and I think some of it is even the same stuff I read in November. And although it's nice to know that we res rescued a cat, 
uh, I'm not sure how many times we have to read about it. Well, and I guess my, my comment about that, and I always want council feedback, is that we just include the sections that are still headed, you know, update November 26th, next update December 20, or no, January 28th, um, which you could just skip because they, they haven't been updated and they say that. Uh, but it often comes up that someone hasn't seen it or remember the public, you know, was interested in an item that was on this week, but it wasn't on last time, so they weren't reading the package. So it's really just whether it is included in the package or not, and uh, that's council's discretion. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Councillor Burdick, you had a, your hand up when we were talking about housing. Did you have a comment? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I have a couple of comments there. I think that there's been a... Um, a real interest from community members in more affordable housing options, which doesn't exclude, you know, other more expensive options or ones that already exist, but maybe a greater variety um, and availability for people in different situations. Um, there, there is a difference also, I think that because something is a little bit less expensive doesn't mean that it's necessarily subsidized. Um, in this case, with the Rapid Housing Initiative, the subsidy is coming from the actual sort of arrangement in a way. So that, that is helping it happen. I noted with that point 15 that the following point of 16, having the conversation with uh, Modal about this is a sort of a way of expanding on it and talking about different possible options beyond the rapid housing initiative. Um, I know I know just from um, anecdotal conversations with people that they do wish to have more options in, in housing and types mm -hmm. of housing. The other thing though is about the um, about the the back having the things for November and December. I have to say in, in the past, and I've only, I guess this is maybe our fourth meeting together as a new council. I think it is, yes. Is that I initially, when I saw the staff report, I was quite confused by the quantity there, but now I think I'm starting to get used to that method. And I did find it useful because there were a couple of points during, um, while I was reading up on the agenda thinking, now what is this thing? Oh, it came up in, you know, in, in um, a few months ago before we were even in. So it was helpful to me, but it can be hard a little bit parsing through there, mm -hmm. but it has been useful. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, Deputy Mayor? I have, um, on the, uh, just started to add my piece on the affordable housing piece, I think uh, to respond to Councillor Kelly's um, question around how much more we need, I think, we need quite a lot more uh, uh, because from a, from a regional perspective, we don't have that much. And, and, and um, yes, we are a small town, but I think we probably, because of our smallness and nimbleness, we might be able to, to make some headwind movement in, in, in uh, changing, I guess, I guess the regional picture. So I, I know that the call for just general proposal might be challenging um, my hope was that maybe some out of out of there there might be somebody who might come up with a an idea that we haven't really thought about and maybe would reach out to council and maybe say well I'd like to work uh, with council on this particular idea and maybe it will generate some mm -hmm. some some dialogue and conversation. In my mind, I think there are some unique ideas that can be trialed out. The, the challenge for me is trying to figure out so how within as councils, part of council, how do we get space to have those conversations? And 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 maybe at some point uh, when we have those, uh, uh, we, we talked about the strategy and uh, and what I can't remember what the name is. When you have those kinds of meetings, then we can have one particularly on affordable housing, and really talk at breadth about that. I'd appreciate uh, creating that space. Uh, there's there's lots of learning from the social housing coalition that might be helpful in in us figuring out how we can position ourselves to be nimble when calls for applications come out. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, just the, the other piece is, uh, I'll, I'll sound to, uh, to Dylan and Mo as a broken record, qu uh, asking questions about the, uh, our decision to uh, put uh, uh, 
to come with a solution, come up with a solution for Clearway and in Main Street. Uh, I know it's written in the report as it as, as it being weather dependent, and I was just in my mind wondering, uh, will there be an opportunity to do something that doesn't require painting but slow down traffic as we wait for that? Because as things are, we're not solving the the concern there, and I've I've had a few conversations over over December. Uh, some uh, a, a resident called me. I think that call town hall and somebody pointed pointed them to my direction. Uh, very concerned because they live very close to that junction, and uh, uh, I was copied in on a on an email from uh, Andrew Turner to 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 Mo and uh, I think Dylan around the same issue. And so I, I was wondering, is, is there something that we can do now? Uh, in my I guess my very layman thinking, we can put up the stop signs without lines. Would that be a problem? Um, and the short answer is it would be a problem. Yeah. And I understand the impulse. I really do. Uh, you know, it's it's tough to want to do something and have staff just say it's safer to do nothing than to do something when you're talking about a safety situation. Um, but that really is it. I mean, we have an engineering design that calls for some pretty minimal stuff, you know, stop stop lines to be painted, advanced signs to be put up, that kind of thing. And um, while we could do without and we were prepared to do without the lighting that is supposed to be a part of this. So if you know, currently we have a, a lit um, uh, pedestrian crossing, which is a yellow light, and that will have to come down because it signals to people that they don't have to stop. And uh, we wanted to to put up uh, flashing reds that go with the with the stop signs to indicate the stop signs more clearly to people. And those are back ordered due to COVID. Now, if we had all the conditions, we could have gone ahead without those because those are an extra. Um, but we couldn't go ahead without the stop stop line painting because then really it's not a legal stop. Council especially with a new one. You just, I mean, especially when you're doing a new one, you want to do it right. Okay. Um, I have a possible suggestion. I don't know if uh, in the meantime, if we could put a call out for somebody to volunteer. It wouldn't, it wouldn't address the full time aspect of the crosswalk as it stands now, but if somebody wanted to, or a few people uh, were willing to volunteer as crosswalk guardians, <laughs> my, my brain is uh, flatlining there, but somebody who would be willing to during school um, times to be there to do that I you know that maybe maybe there'd be a few people who would be interested in that does it look like it's springtime that it might happen yeah I mean uh, if we've got the contractor to paint so they say it needs to be uh, they need at least eight hours at four degrees and uh, that just they just haven't felt that there have been those conditions I mean and, and it not precipitating of course so we did have a few warmer yeah. days but uh, we didn't have eight hours without precipitation. Um, so my expectation based on the weather we're having is it, it's going to be spring. Um, but at that time, we'll be ready to go with the, you know, proper signage, new signage, the, the you know, flashing lights and everything else. And, um, you know, while that is frustrating, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's better done, done right. Um, but other suggestions other than actually altering the intersection, <laughs> I'm happy to hear them. I'd just be, as the traffic authority, I, I would, I would recommend that we don't proceed with part of what the engineers have told us to do. Answer fee. Mayor, I think that the outcome of the transportation study and the resulting um, decisions um, to move forward um, will be well received. I think all of those projects, both this council and, and the last, I think would unanimously support all of the decisions that were made last summer. Uh, and I think the town's going to enthusiastically embrace them all, including including the uh, the corner of um, of that intersection um, that the deputy mayor speaks to. Uh, and we've also had a conversation, I'd say, at one of our last two meetings about the unfortunate timing of, you know, our desire to be fiscally, you know, prudent and, and frugal and wait patiently for the other levels of government to kick in the funding that we mm -hmm. expected when we, we made the when we made those decisions. So I think we're, I think we're doing the best we can given the fact that we don't want to go alone, go, go it alone. Albeit, I think the deputy mayor has spoken about this a few times about the safety reality on main street there. So I think we made that decision to proceed. 
But my thinking around the, the overall portfolio investments is that while we, while it's probably, I, I'm willing to be patient. I think it's reasonable to be patient. Patient means next summer in my mind um, for the whole portfolio of projects to proceed with the other levels of government supporting it. Um, communi- taking the opportunity to re-communicate back to the, back to the community explaining the decisions and what's like, what's on the agenda. Like what, what are we moving forward with? Uh, and I think that the staff did a really elegant job of putting together that, that one pager um, last year. They kind of showed all of the new changes all along the main street corridor. I re- I really think we should republish that, push that out and either in the back end of the mayor's newsletter or, or as an individual publication and and just recommunicate that we know we know we we we've heard the message changes are coming and we expect those some of these most of these changes will happen at some point in 2021. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Mr. Hyde, was there any luck with the contractors around the notion of using special equipment to be able to paint the streets even in the cold weather? Like I, I did run that by Derek. I haven't heard back from him. We, we were going to meet today, and unfortunately, there was a water main break, as seems to happen quite a bit when I'm just about to sit down with Derek. So um, that's the state of our of our assets, I guess. But um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, we'll go over it again. But um, yeah, I, I again, like, uh, as I said, when when it was raised, is it something we've never used before? And I know it would be a special deployment of equipment down for Metro. So it probably doing the painting will be the cost of the entire uh, intersection, mm-hmm. like equivalent to the rest of the cost of the project. But I'll I'll get a quote if there is a quote that can be obtained. Okay. And it doesn't improve the the red light supply situation. <laughs> no, it wouldn't wouldn't do that. But we were prepared to go without that. I mean, an intersection is not required to have lighting. It's just uh, it is a prominent intersection. It's the most prominent stop. It w- will be in town on the main street. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Councillor Feeney, I, I think we'll, uh, between the town clerk and myself, we'll dig that copy out and consider maybe a variation for the next newsletter, which is due fairly soon, I think. Clerk? It is due soon? Yes, we'll be uh, publishing it the 1st of February. I wake up with a hammer hanging over my head because she sent me an email looking for the the stuff for the newsletter. Anyway, okay. Anything else for CAO on the report? Councillor Burdick? Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention I, about the number number twenty three about the um, the proposed local improvement bylaw. I noticed a post on Facebook about that today, which was great uh, about the upcoming uh, Zoom happening. It might be good. To, maybe you already had this planned, uh, but to post it post that in full on social media, maybe the website, just so people can easily access it. I saw a link on the on the Facebook page, but it might be nice just to have a, a fully visible bylaw for people. Yeah. I think I can speak to this, Dylan. I know what, what the link was. So we actually don't have a draft bylaw at this point. Uh, the public information meeting is just to bring everybody together to have a discussion. Mm-hmm. So they can ask us questions. We can ask them questions. So we go into that with a clean slate. Um, I find myself in public information meeting, someone asks me a question and I say, I don't know the answer yet. We're just, um, we're at now That being one. said, the council members do know, sorry to step on you, Mo, but the council members do know because I provided a draft of what an example of a bylaw might look like. Um, so, so we do have that, but it, Mo is right that, you know, part of the process with the public information meeting is usually we just try to talk about what if the town were going to do something. And uh, before we kind of put the put the bylaw draft out there, and then there's a subsequent hearing where we actually have the draft. Um, so I, I don't know whether it would be. Um, I guess the concern is about is about biasing people because I just I provided a draft if we inserted Mahone Bay in place of HRM kind of thing. 
Um, so yeah. what we did was we set, uh, we set up a link that uh, sends people to the meeting package from December 8th when that was provided and it has the page number for the report. So okay, that well, thank include... you. I think that's as close as you can get probably then without it, mm -hmm. without saying that we're putting words in people's mouths, which I really don't want to do. I just, it's such a complicated subject. I thought it might be good to give something to council. Yeah. So it I'll, includes I'll... that as well as the rationale behind why we're holding a public information meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, Councillor Burdick, uh, did you want to finish your? Sorry, comment? yeah, I, I, I guess what, I guess that what I was uh, meaning in there is that so that people aren't just following a link to the the that that it's just physically there because I know, I, I've when people sometimes see those words they don't necessarily know what's meant and then they might not attend, a little vague sounding so it just gives them a more immediate idea. That's all. Okay, thank you. Councillor Carver. Um, yes, while we're on the topic of public information meetings, um, I wonder if staff could comment on the uh, role of councillors at those meetings. Yeah, well, a, a public information meeting is, a, you know, an open discussion. Um, it is meant to be uh, an opportunity for members of the public to participate, but uh, council members, unlike a hearing, are allowed to be part of that conversation. Uh, if the PIM is to hear from the public and, you know, the majority of attendees are council members, then when we report on the PIM, you guys will remember that and it probably isn't going to have very much of an impact. Um, but other than that, uh, council members are allowed to participate in the conversation. So it's not like the hearing process where you're not allowed to. So the participation would be to ask questions, but not necessarily to answer questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if council members choose to be on the conversation, it's a Zoom call and a member of the public, um, you know, may <laughs> may solicit you guys to participate in conversation. And, and it's a it's an open conversation. So that's something you'll have to if you decide to be there, then, um, you know, use your judgment. But they, um, we don't chair the conversation in the same way that the mayor would chair the hearing um, because it is a fairly informal conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Carver. Anyone else? Councillor Burdick. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the time to do this because I don't have it uh, visually in front of me, but about bylaw enforcement, is this the time to talk about that? Well, bylaw enforcement is one of the items in the staff report. Okay. Um, I, I noted that in December there was conversation um, amongst us, as well as in the general community, about the um, the unleashed <laughs> dog situation, and then I noticed that it wasn't on on the agenda for today. Um, and I guess my question was: Had anyone actually from the community made a formal complaint at this to this point, or has it all been on social oh. media? I'll, I'll just address the thing about it not being in the report first, and then maybe, Mo, if you don't mind, we'll get the freshest, has there been any word, because I wouldn't know if there's been today. Uh, but as far as the bylaw report in there, that's one of those things that gets updated at the second meeting of each month. So all the conversation that we've had, just, we just haven't gotten around to the bylaw update. And then we do provide a kind of a high level update on the bylaws. So it would, we would probably say if we received a number of without any description of the complaints. Um, that being said, uh, Maureen, <laughs> up to date, uh, have we received without any information? Any? Okay. I didn't know. No, so. even to this point, we've not received any complaints. Hmm. Which is Thanks. a good opportunity. I mean, I doubt anyone's watching who would have not known how to complain, but just in case they, <laughs> they would like to, could always contact the office so by phone and our general number after hours. If it's an emergency, call the animal control contractor directly. Mm -hmm. Um, well, if it's an emergency, call 911. But if it's an urgent dog control matter, call the animal control contractor directly. And I think that information went out on public media in December, January timeline. Deputy Mayor. I just wanted to, to comment and to say uh, not having received a formal complaint doesn't mean that nothing is happening in the background to try and resolve the situation, right? It, that's it, correct. It, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I think that's that's important for us to put out there that 
we're not waiting, we're not sitting and waiting for somebody to formally uh, formally do that. And 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 this pass to the next, I guess, comment or thought around uh, that I, I, this is about dogs in particular, but there might be issues similar to that, that you will not get a formal complaint or report at the town hall, but through this, I guess, informal channels, the, the matters come up. Uh, what is what is the standard practice or what is the standard expectation? Um, and I'll give an example. There's, I think there, there was a time there was talk of a, a white truck uh, going very fast past, uh, I think, the Mahombe Center parking lot. And it will do that constantly. And there was a lot of Facebook conversations and emails going around around that happening. And I don't think anybody formally uh, made a complaint to the town hall, but they did call the RCMP and, and things like that. So, so just for clarity, for, for clarity's sake, when 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 nobody is willing to, I guess, in the community to come and make a formal complaint, but we know those things are happening, uh, we're still able to 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 do something about that. Uh, uh, yes and no. Um, one of the issues when we get a formal complaint, we have uh, the complaint is that this thing happened. So we can then follow up on that. Um, you know, the other side of this, you know, for one side of this is that we get to speak to someone and say, look, we've heard this about you. Um, ultimately, that may lead to a discussion about, you know, we need this behavior to change or this to be this way. The other side of that is, um, someone else with a white truck says, that wasn't my white truck, you know? Um, so we have to be very careful. Um, conversations happen on Facebook. Um, at what point, you know, we can't delve, jump into a conversation on Facebook because we all know the internet, right? Um, so in the instance that you just gave Deputy Mayor, when someone followed up with the RCMP, absolutely. That was uh, uh, some sort of vehicular issue that is completely an RCMP issue. But if someone were to call the town, if they said, look, this is happening, it's not safe, I don't like it, whatever. And they were to call town hall and say, this is what happened. In that case where it is clearly an RCMP matter, we would tell them to contact the RCMP. And the reason we don't follow up on it ourselves, there's a couple of reasons. One is that there are going to be follow-up questions that we don't have the, like staff don't have the answers to. And the other thing is if I get four phone calls about white trucks and I call my RCMP liaison and because I have the magic number, then that's one complaint. Whereas um, if four people from the community call, then that's a different issue than Mo called me once today about a white truck. So, so I was gonna give a slightly less uh, specific answer, but thank you, Mo. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk about like the two ways that we deal with by law enforcement and law enforcement generally. So, you know, obviously we're doing complaints driven, we're responding to calls, specific issues that have arisen for specific people. But the other way that by law enforcement and the RCMP get their marching orders is, is from the council. Um, so being able to be aware of things that are concerns in the community, um, both because we collect data, we present it to you, but also because you're hearing from people in the community on a, on a personal level, um, that's very important. So when we have these conversations, we can direct more proactive measures when counselors bring things to the attention of staff that way. Um, you know, it's all about finding the best ways to do it, but certainly there is an importance to setting priorities at that level, um, both as we go, because you hear about things, and then kind of on an annual basis when we're talking about allocation of resources. And, um, and theoretically, the RCMP also will come to council to talk about annual priority setting. Um, I say theoretically, I'm not actually sure we've done that in Mahone Bay, but I know that they are obligated to do that uh, when they serve municipalities with a direct contract. We're under the provincial contract, so I'm not sure how much that happens with us. Councillor Carver. Yeah, I, I think it's really worthwhile to keep the messaging going out about the importance of um, making a complaint. Uh, it just seems like so much uh, wasted breath when people are uh, expressing their frustration on Facebook. Um, and we've made efforts to post information about if you have a concern, please call town hall or all the numbers that the CAO just mentioned. Um, so I just think it's really important to encourage people to find ways to encourage people to feel comfortable in uh, letting us know when things are 
not right. Okay, Councillor Feeney. <laughs> Mayor, so I mean, this is a good example of a of a, a typical issue that comes up periodically that it, I think there's a real value in having council have the opportunity to have a roundtable discussion on the topic, which will lead in odd places from time to time, but probably will help bring everybody up to the same level of understanding of kind of what, what the community is thinking about. So, you know, uh, we've talked about having a committee of the whole periodically once a quarter. This is the kind of topic that would go to that kind of a meeting. We could, and if we could play it out. We could talk about what's the virtue of having an off leash location. What's the virtue of having, um, you know, areas that are designated for trash receptacles. Um, you know, the, the reality is, is that we're the, everybody with a dog who wants to walk on a, um, on a trail and or a sidewalk is going to come from the entire municipality to the town. And I think everybody, you know, appreciates that the volume of, of dogs in the community is at an all time high. So, mm -hmm. and hey, the more the merrier, but, but I do think it's having an impact and, and we're all well aware of that. So, you know, I do think that the, the takeaway for me is I, you know, I don't have an educated opinion on the topic yet, but I believe that, you know, we've got seven or eight opinions at this meeting now that probably all have an individual perspective of it. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear them. I'd like to hear what everybody's thinking about it. Not necessarily this evening, but at a, at a, at the appropriate time there, if you, uh, if at your call, I'm happy to show up and have a more thorough conversation on the, the topic. And there's no shortage of opinions from the community. And I think we just need a way to get those on onto the agenda. Okay, thank you. I think one of the things we had talked about was um, a renewed education process, of, particularly around dogs and, and the, the dog bylaw, the role of the dog catcher, the power of the dog catcher that a lot of dog owners need to be aware of. And I'm under the impression, Clerk, that that's something we should see unfolding beginning this month? Yes, the first post went out the end of last week and we're just gradually going to build up. Um, we have some more meetings to finalize exactly what the rest of that is going to look like, but I've been speaking with both our uh, dog control officer and our bylaw officer last week. So um, I have another meeting coming up this week where we hope to finalize exactly what it's going to look like. So yes, we uh, the very first post went out on Facebook and we are going to definitely emphasize the leash issue as well as the stoop and scoop issue, um, as well as our regular stuff with this time of year, there's always a push about get your free annual dog tag because that helps us know how to get your dog back to you. I met Ollie on the street the other day, walking in town. Ollie's our tag number one dog this year. Handsome beast. That he is. Anyone else? Anything else for the CAO around the staff report? Councillor Wilson? No? Okay. Thank you, CAO, clerk. Let's move on to item 6.2, the staff report on wayfinding signage that was deferred from November 26th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So this was deferred in order to make room for one more quick survey. Mm -hmm. And the results of that are presented in your package. Uh, and I'll just put that up on the screen uh, real quickly, although it's a pretty simple one. Um, so council had wanted to see one more option presented uh, and get some public feedback. That was between um, two versions with the same coloration, but different characteristics. And just as a reminder, the intention here is to provide to the designer the go ahead to uh, complete the uh, mock-ups of the various signs for the different locations based on a template. Um, so uh, our, our funding from the province, which, uh, which we are to expend this year, is to have these designs confirmed and then have the signs made up. So um, if council okay is the design, then we go and uh, we'll say to the contractor, okay, you're good to produce designs for these you know, 20 or so different locations, uh, replacing existing or new um, signage according to this template. And then we have to come back to council and say, are we good to go to the printer? 
So that's the uh, the final step. So this is an important uh, primary decision we're looking for from council is just to choose between these two options and uh, by motion give the go ahead to uh, the designer. Okay, thank you. Questions? Mayor, just for the uh, sake of the viewing audience, um, what were the results of the of the the second survey? What does the actual choice look like, CAO? Yeah, sorry. So we had 33 people respond this time around, and uh, 20 of them preferred option one. So that's 60, just over 60 percent, uh, and uh, 13, uh, just under 40 percent, preferred option two. Um, I can put the back on the screen uh, for a moment here, just so people know what I'm saying. So the majority uh, of respondents, 60% preferred option one. Uh, colors are the same. So we were essentially choosing on the design of the fonts and the readability there. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Carver? I'd be prepared to make a motion that we accept the uh, option one as the design to uh, send back to the designer to work on. Okay. Do we have I a do second? want to second that. Okay. Councillor now seconds that. All in favor? Motions carried. We now have a town full of signs. That's good. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Uh, revi the revisions to town council and to the committee's policy. So this one is a little bit more complicated. There were a number of um, specific revisions that council directed staff to produce for consideration. And uh, the basically revisions to the committee's policy and the, count and the town council policy. Um, we can go through the two, we gotta go through the two policies separately. I'm just gonna bring them up on the screen. And uh, Maureen has highlighted the changes which We'll just quickly go through the different changes and uh, see if there's anything else that council would like to see. And uh, when council is so inclined, if council is so inclined, uh, we can, uh, these have been presented now, um, sufficient to be allowed to be voted upon. So if, uh, if anyone wishes to make a motion to adopt the policy as amended, then that's in order. Um, so the first change that was made, uh, sorry, we're on the um, town council policy first. And the first change that was made was a change to the phrasing of delegations and is now referred to as presentations from the public. So this was just a change to the um, order, uh, agenda order, but it's also a change uh, wherever delegations have been referenced here. Maureen made that change. And uh, also presented on the same screen because it just happens to be located here was the addition of a public input session ahead of the regular meeting. And uh, that was based on the discussion at council. So just while these sections are up, um, we'll see if anyone has feedback on those sections. Oh, sorry, and the mayor won't be able to see the hands. Councilor Carper has her hand up. I can't see everybody either. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, um, the public input session, uh, I, I made a submission of an idea in writing before the meeting, the idea that um, if there's a 15 minute session, uh, if one person turns up, that that person not be not be take up the whole 15 minutes, but that there be a, a three or four minute limit set on the timing, the time available for a, a person to speak at the public input session. So I'm just putting that out for consideration to include that. I saw a couple other hands go up while you were saying that. So I've decided to stop the screen share for the moment, but if anyone wants me to put it back up, I will. Deputy Mayor. You're on mute, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I was trying to figure out where the, uh, the unmute button went. Um, I, I I hear you, Councillor Carver, uh, but I, I I think I I would be inclined to say if if it's one person, they can have the 15 minutes. They might have a longer issue. Uh, wouldn't I wouldn't be inclined to limit them. That probably would be my stand. If, if I could offer one comment, I believe the notion of a citizen 
coming to council to make a presentation, i.e. get the normal uh, 10 minute session still applies quite apart from this. It was not intended to take that away with this, was it? No. No, so someone who has a, a bigger issue with more that they would want to discuss, then they can get themselves put on the council agenda, yeah. not limit themselves to the three minutes that this would afford them, I think. Councillor Burdick? Uh, my feeling is that three minutes is fairly substantial. Um, but I would say that there'd be, if that were, if we did agree on that, um, that there would be, there there would have to be a maximum of five part participants so that it didn't exceed the 15 minutes. So that would also have to be clear in the wording. Because if uh, a, a lot of people, would it then be if say six or seven or eight people came that we would just take the first five? I mean, see, that would be a very popular a public input session, but maybe maximum five, you know, but if it's one person, then it's the, the three, or maybe there's more leeway. I guess also the thing is if we're scheduling this to happen before the council meeting, it would always start at quarter two. And therefore there'd be this, if one person showed up, then there'd be this kind of long, <laughs> well, relatively long time but before the meeting started. Okay. Councillor Feeney? <laughs> Mayor, I think you made the point, if, if the, the, the benefit of this process is that you can show up with a, a point you wanna make with no notice. Um, if you have a lengthy commentary or if there's something significant, you know, get yourself on the agenda by Thursday previous to the meeting mm -hmm. um, and in the normal course of business and you can have up to 10 minutes. Um, so I think as the deputy mayor put this item forward, this is value add. This is, this is not taking away from what's already there. This is giving the community something, something new and extra. Um, but I do think as it relates to this uh, bylaw um, or this uh, I, I, um, process, I do think that the, the real salient point there is the chair that the mayor as the chair or or the chair of the meeting um, has has the discretion about how much of that 15 minutes an individual um, will have. And you know the mayor may provide that that individual the full 15 minutes or if there are two or three people who want a few minutes, you, you may have to allocate that time. So I just think as it relates to this particular um, clause, um, the nuance is, um, it's at the mayor's, it's at the chair's discretion or the mayor's discretion, um, how the time gets allocated, but the entire, but the, but the, the business needs to be resolved by, um, 659.59. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Now, you had a comment? Yes. The only thing I was, uh, looking at is to say in this time is before the meeting, but then they've changed the agenda to say from the public, comments from the public in the other rather than the delegation. So uh, it just seems a little confusing that is the public before the call to order or is it after? Because on the agenda that they presented there just a minute ago, it showed that uh, it was actually in where the delegations used to be. Yeah, so that, I mean, that's just the, there's two different things happening. One is changing the name of the delegation's time slot, but keeping all the rules associated with it. So that would be called presentations from the public. But the addition of the public input session is before the agenda. Okay. So the reason it doesn't appear on there is because it happens before the call to order for the meeting. Okay, interesting. Other comments, Councillor Kerber? Yes. Um, I, I don't feel strongly about it either way. At the moment, the way it's written, um, time will be allotted on equal share of time. So if there's uh, three people turn up for the 15 minute session, they each have five minutes. Um, so, some jurisdictions where they have this kind of format available have set limits on the length of time each person might speak, but I, I really feel that this, this works just as well too. And the goal is to strive for it, informality to make it more accessible for people to, to come and talk. 
um, the risk is if it's one person just for a long time, um, that we end up having a, a chat with one person. And I, I'm not sure that's where we want to, where we want to go necessarily. Well, maybe we do. Um, but if it's the same, until the we same actually person do it. every meeting. Uh, there's nothing yeah. saying you can't come back for a 15 minute chat every meeting yeah. as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so I, I, it's just a, a sense that we haven't, we have to try it and see how it goes. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to, to, to just comment that uh, we should uh, take this as a uh, as just creating a culture of, of council approachability and test it out and see how it goes. So I know it's a bit uncomfortable, but uh, let's go on that journey and uh, and see where it, where it leads us. If we need to change that, the policy is at our discretion, I think, and we can change that and say, well, we need to limit the amount of time now, right? Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a motion on this? Oh, uh, I just want to, that was where we had left off in terms of reviewing that document, but I just want to make sure we've gone through the whole one before we get a motion on the town council policy. I don't see anything else. But... Nope, sorry. Um, oh, this isn't the right document. Sorry about that, council members. Too many things open on my screen here at one time. All right, we're back to the document there. Um, so I just wanted to, oh, there we go. I just wanted to, so all the other places where there's a change have been to the presentation's name. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor's got his hand up. I don't, uh, I can stop for a second. Yeah, Deputy Mayor. I was responding to uh, 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 Penny's question. So I, I had a few things to point out that I noticed. Uh, one was under recordings, uh, it still talks about delegation rather than presenters. If you go uh, to where it, um, it's written recordings. Um, yeah, you see that we'll just do a, we'll do a find, uh, find function for that if that works for everybody. Yeah. Uh, and, and then under, uh, public input session, it talks about, uh, in, in the detail of it, it talks about a public information session, which is not what that's meant to be. Indeed. Yeah. I'm just looking back on that one. Uh, yes, you're right. Um, no motions are to see. Yeah, so that's going to just be where the wording had come from there. So we'll say at the uh, public input session mode, did you see that where it says public information? It should say public input. Okay. Um, and then I had a question under, under bylaw by approval process. Uh, it, it talks about uh, only only the, 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 the folks who are in, in the council meeting can vote. And I was wondering if, uh, maybe the rationale for that and uh, is it possible for, if we know that there's a vote that's going to happen and will not be at the meeting to send our vote to the clerk and the CEO in confidence to be shared at the vote rather than that vote not being considered? Yeah, I can address that. So uh, that's an MGA requirement. Um, yeah. So when, when, you, when you're going to vote on a bylaw, you have to have been present for the hearing. So if you can be present for the hearing and then participate in the meeting in, in some other way that satisfies the rest of our policy, which there's there's an allowance for, um, let's say the hearing happened a different night from the meeting, they're not required to happen the same night. Um, a council member could participate remotely in the, uh, in the meeting uh, as long as they participated in the hearing. Um, but if it's a vote of council, we don't have an option for, for what you're talking about in terms of like passing it in um, you'd have to participate remotely or in person, depending on the format. Uh, but yeah, we can't do anything about the requirement to participate in the hearing. That's that's an MGA requirement. Yes, and I think to, to you know, be able to be able to vote, whether one does it electronically or in person, one has to have been at the hearing. Okay. okay. Councillor Carver. I'm sorry if this takes us sideways on this, but at, um, for attending the public hearing, um, if if we're back in regular situations where p hearings are being held in person, mm -hmm. um, 
could a member of council attend the meeting, the hearing remotely? Is that, is that counted as being present? It's a good question. It's a good question. And maybe a question for our solicitor. I don't know, Mo could take it yeah. down, but yeah, it's a good question because if the hearing were taking place in a, in a physical yeah. uh, space, uh, I would strongly suggest that counselors be present at the physical hearing. But before we get into that, maybe we can get a legal opinion. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, I mean, I always thought that that's the intent of the MGA, but given that we've all been working remotely, um, I wonder if that'll change. Mm. It's a good question. Yeah, because the MGA doesn't, you're, you're right, it doesn't specify that, I don't believe, uh, that, that you cannot do it electronically but there's yeah no the MGA, the MGA is sort of it. silent on the whole question of electronic facilities for meetings despite the request that <laughs> certainly NSFM has asked for them to to make that a rule but yeah. they, they haven't done that yeah. well let's ask the question CAO that's a good segue to my next question uh, under 5.3 uh, it only talks about uh, it's about attendance at council meetings and it only talks about in-person meetings. It doesn't say anything about the Zoom environment. And I was wondering whether we want to include some detail there about the Zoom environment or not. I think it would be a good idea, especially now that we're talking about um, normally in the Zoom environment, the opportunity for someone to disrupt the, the discourse of the meeting other than council members, of course, or staff. Uh, nobody else has the access, but we're, we're going to be increasingly opening that up. So um, good to know that there's some protocols around how people are supposed to, to, to be respectful there. Yeah. Perhaps a reference to the conducting meetings by electronic facilities that follows on to that, uh, that discussion. Even though it seems like a pretty straightforward one, I, I'm, I'm going to suggest that uh, council not necessarily wait if there's a, a desire to approve the changes as presented, then subsequently a motion could be made, direct staff to come back with some rewording of uh, 5.3 specifically, just because I think you're going to want to see it and you may not want to delay the effect of the implementation of the public input session or other changes. Yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Now, the, the last one is a question just for me to understand. So the 5.0, uh, 5.1 and 5.2 are very procedural. And I was wondering whether that's also an MGA requirement or it's what we've de determined as council in the past. Yeah, it's not an MGA requirement. Um, we're required to provide rules of order. And yeah. often what is done is subscribing to an external rule of order. So Robert's rules, for example, is commonly cited. Um, what we've tried to do here is provide a very transparent and very minimal amount of rules of order that apply so that there's no sort of um, arcane you know, reference that somebody may not understand everything that applies to our council is in this policy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I don't see. And then the mayor was correct, even though I went down just to make sure for my own benefit, the only other changes that were presented were the, the term delegations to presentations. And then we'll make that one more change as Councillor or Deputy Mayor Kingata noticed that we had missed one. Okay. So um, we should do these by separate motions, I think, CAO. Uh, well, they're all presented together. So if council wants to do one to approve the um, town council policy as uh, as amended. What's that? Oh, yes. No, do do the committee separately. We haven't even talked about that okay. one yet. Okay, good. So one motion to do to uh, for council to approve the um, new revised town council policy. Somebody wish to make that motion? Councillor Feeney? And do we have a seconder? Councillor Burdick? Moved and seconded that we, uh, council accepts the new town council policy. On the question, all in favor? Motion's carried. Okay. Mayor, let's... Mayor, Mayor, before we move to the committee uh, mm -hmm. item, do we want to address the deputy mayor's point about you know electronic meetings and at this time put a motion forward to direct staff to review that item. 
We all, is that where we all on the same page on that? That that's what we're going to do? I'm seeing, I'm not. No, it's. Are we okay with that? That is what I had anticipated someone okay. would do, uh, just if you're asking. Francis, if you make that motion, I'll help you move it across the goal line. Okay. Uh, help, help me with the wording more, please. Honestly, I'm not even 100% sure what it is exactly that you okay. want to. I know oh, you I'm want sorry. to. I'm sorry. I was saying it was a, my, my take on it would be to direct staff to uh, provide a proposed rewording of Section 5.3, taking into account the conduct of meetings by electronic facilities, since those are the terms we use. So I I'll, I'll, I'll move a motion to direct staff to do what the CAO just mentioned. <laughs> so, so Second that too. If I'm reading it right, CAO, the, the, the key change will be to define what constitutes a meeting. The fact that in-person or electronic stands as a meeting and the notion of attendance and participation will stand regardless of whether it is an electronic meeting or a meeting at which you are physically present. And we, uh, we talk about, you know, how someone could be causing a disruption or how that might be addressed. And all of the terminology used speaks to the, the physical room. Um, so even just to, to simply say that, you know, it would be possible for someone to be ejected from a Zoom meeting, um, you know, and that way, I think we all know under what conditions that happens in the, in, the, in the world, people get a hold of a Zoom link, people come in, it could be quite a bit more disruptive than in an in-person meeting because they don't mm -hmm. have to physically come into the building. Um, yeah. and, and we should be following our policy when we kick them out, if we do, uh, and council should provide the direction the staff to use to, to do that. So, so that's what we would do here, just, just updating to the 21st century. Okay. So... It was moved and seconded on the question. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. All right, let's go to the committee's policy. There was a fair amount of discussion. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll share it again here. Just one moment. Lost my... Oh, there's the share button back. down. Okay, so under committees, uh, we didn't change the body of the policy. It was just the schedules that we were changing um, two particular changes. And uh, there may want to be a proposal of another one. I, I know um, when we were looking at this list uh, previously, and uh, council had decided that in order to make some opportunity to have a discussion about strategic priorities, how economic development fits into the, the council strategic plan. Um, we would suspend the membership of the economic development committee uh, because right now we were going to reappoint. We don't have to reappoint. Um, we've done the advertising for the other committees and uh, council may want to consider if any of those should be evaluated as part of that same process. And then we have a new committee, which we'll detail in a moment. Uh, but I see Councillor Carver's hand is up. Um, yes, in my written correspondence with the CAO yesterday uh, and, and council, I uh, asked about um, suspending the age-friendly community committee at this point. It strikes me that it's a good time to e evaluate um, the terms of reference of that committee, um, and uh, it would be good to have some time to do that uh, before we consider even re-advertising for members for that committee. So I'd like to make a motion that the Age-Friendly Community Committee um, be suspended for review, evaluation and review um, in the same manner as the Economic Development Committee. Hmm. CAO? Oh, just, uh, it, there hasn't been a seconder yet, so I don't know if I should talk, but I was just going to say if Penny was saying she'd like to make the motion, but rather than actually making the motion, this can also be a part of the same motion that approves this document, but we add suspended to the to the oh, okay. um, age-friendly as yeah. well. Uh, so okay. I didn't know which way we want to do it, but. Um, 
I'd be happy to make the motion to, to adopt the whole policy with the addition of that the Age Friendly Community Committee would be um, suspended for the purpose of review uh, of its terms of reference. Okay. Deputy Mayor? So, so this for me, not, not that I'm, I'm, I'm saying no to uh, what, what has been proposed, but I'm just posing the question uh, in the sense that for both committees, uh, yes, we want to suspend them. We want to look at the terms of reference. Do the, do the community, uh, community members who've been part of the committee get an opportunity to be involved in that decision? Um, so for instance, the Economic Development Committee, I, I know it has had its challenges and even the age friendly one, uh, but there are some folks who might really be passionate about the work there and they just hear that, oh, council has suspended it. The reason I'm raising it is because I've, I've, I've been on the other side where uh, being part of a committee council to a certain extent made a decision and then the committee no, no longer exists and was left in the dark, not, not with this particular, uh, in, in the town of Mahombe, but in, in another uh, um, municipality. And so it, with the membership, it might not sit very well. Uh, will you want to consider reaching out to them to, to suss out what they think? Councillor Carver? Yes, first I would like to have a seconder for the motion before we have a discussion, because I, and I would like to re reply to the deputy mayor. My, my apologies, I'm sorry for breaking protocol. Councillor Wilson has seconded the motion. Thank you. So may I respond now to the Deputy Mayor's comments? You certainly may. Yeah, in relation to the Age-Friendly Community Committee, um, I felt for the past two years that it would be good to have a, a, a look at the terms of reference again, partly because the way the committee structure has been described and defined now has changed since that committee started way back in 2010. Um, so that, and because there were, there was only one, well, I, I don't know what I can say about that. Because we're, we are, because we're in a transition between members, in other words, we have no current members to um, uh, comment. In, in situ, but we could always consult them um, as, a, as part of the process of review, um, asking, you were on the Age-Friendly Committee for a period of time, do you have some comments um, about it? So I, I, I'm feeling pretty comfortable that, that this is a good time to do it, because it's right in between. Um, okay. So I, I don't know if everybody was uh, just uh, what we haven't looked at yet. And if we're we're in discussion on the motion and the motion is for the whole thing, um, part of this whole thing would be the other part other than suspending committees was to add a new committee. Um, so maybe I'll just briefly make sure that we have a chance to review the proposed policy and strategy committee name uh, kind of pending. I guess we uh, we had to put a name on it, uh, but council was essentially looking for an all, an all member committee uh, for discussion of items in depth that are referred to it by council, uh, and in particular items that are discussed in depth would include um, bylaws, policies, strategic documents, but could include any item as referred. So we had a discussion about how housing might be one of those subjects. Um, so it's up on the screen here. Uh, I can answer any questions about it, uh, if there are any. And if not, then uh, we are in discussion on a motion. So, uh, you know, at some point, the question can be called. Consideration. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add that I would be comfortable with the idea that, uh, 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 just responding to Penny, the idea that uh, we can reach out to members who are in the committees before. I hadn't realized that in situ, I guess, uh, situation. So thank you for educating me on that. I'm not sure if something has happened to David. I've lost his video feed. Um, yeah, um, Deputy Mayor, it wasn't so much a matter of, of education. It was actually a matter of 
my hunch that that would be a, a good thing to do um, as part of the re a review and evaluation. So I would hope that that would be included in, as part of the process. Um, thank you. <laughs> So, so just to clarify, the, the motion is to is to accept um, the policy with that amendment. Yeah, to adopt the policy as amended, and there were three amendments, two of which were already presented, which was suspending uh -huh. economic development and adding the new policy and strategy committee. Now we have a third amendment is also on this motion, and that is to suspend the age friendly in the same term. And uh, yeah, I, th I think Mary Devinney may be having a technical problem. We're trying to see if mm. we can sort that out. Oh, we can hear you, David. I can't see you. You can hear me now, can you? I can hear you now, yes. I was, I was worried no one could answer Alice's hand that she's had up. This, but I... this is the camera that I was uh, given as a fix for the other camera that's built into my laptop. My question was whether or not we don't already address all of the issues that are contained here uh, particularly if we go to a meeting of the whole kind of a thing, which is what we've been talking about, do we really need another committee to do this? Well, or so is it not something we address anyway? So I just wanted to, I, I can't speak to the whole question because I think it's a question to everybody, but I just wanted to address the point about if we go to a committee of the whole kind of thing, this is the proposed sort of opportunity for council to have those type of discussions. So I don't, I don't, we didn't receive a direction to go any further as far as committee of the whole. And I think council understands there's some drawbacks to replacing a regular meeting. So this was, uh, this is an addition, um, although we have now suspended two of the other committees that meet monthly, which, which creates a little bit more space. Uh, but council may want to talk about when this committee would meet because uh, the daytime evening conversation is, a, is an important one when we're adding another meeting. Uh, but yeah, just to clarify, I, I don't believe there's any other change with respect to committee of the whole. I think this is the proposed uh, meeting of the whole council. Uh, Mayor, I'm just going to weigh in here. I'm not sure if you can see us or we can't see you. But I, can, I'm not sure if you can I can see, I can see you. Ah, fair enough. Uh, you got the best of both worlds. Um, <laughs> On, uh, on that policy um, point, Dylan, the second bullet around um, items, like how it, items get on that agenda. Um, I don't know if you, if you wouldn't mind bringing it back up on the screen. So I'm just, I, I don't have it in front of me, but it's, it basically says the mandate is to review section B, consideration of matters before council, which have been referred to the policy. So um look i was hoping that we could achieve a cutting kind of a meeting format where items for discussion can eat can come can come up organically versus um you know so so maybe maybe not necessarily will we always have set agendas or will we be required to follow a set agenda um so um do we are, is in section B, is this envisioning a process where councilors will have to forward agenda items um, to the chair to, to establish an agenda for this meeting? That is what's what's envisioned there. So okay. I think that is an important catch. If you know, essentially we as staff were always thinking like, how are people allowed to put something on the agenda for a meeting? So right. this creates a way in which it would have to come through a council meeting. And if council's comfortable with other ways of having items arrive at the agenda, then, then that's certainly an option. You could just add a C here, for example. Um, but I, I did want to note that uh, we probably want to add the text. I'm just going to scroll up briefly. There's some text in some of the other committees, uh, which specifically says, um, uh, where's one of these ones? Mode, what I can point to. Uh, that the committee exercises its responsibilities by recommendation. The council is essentially the kind of sentence that I'm looking for. Uh, here we go. The committee discharges its responsibilities via recommendations to council, which independently considers the recommendations of the committee. Should council approve the committee recommendations, staff resources can be allocated to support the committee's mandate. Even though this is a committee of all council, I do think that you'll want to consider, um, because in our regular meetings, we have a lot of rules that prevent something from being raised and having a motion made to direct staff or resources to it without any thought by council members or to give people a chance to think about it, that if we do allow things to come up on this agenda for the first time, we probably need to restrict this committee to making a recommendation to a future meeting of council. 
And that may be an absolutely right. appropriate caveat to put on this committee. It just is essentially it moves it from being a, you know able to do that stuff to always taking a delay, but then allowing for more free flowing conversation because there's no risk that a decision is going to be made without proper consideration. So uh, just one one final point. Sorry, Mayor. Um, will this meeting be considered a public meet? Will that committee be considered a public meeting? Yeah, the MGA is still there, so uh, so we're still required to have all of our meetings take place in public. Fair enough. That was my question: was whether this one would be conducted in public. Now, according to our current procedures, this meeting would not be televised, um, but that's generally something that we've done out of respect for the non-council members of our committees. So, mm -hmm. if council so decided, this one certainly could be televised because it's only members of council. So that's that's something you'd have to think about as well. Okay. Um, may I speak? Oh, there, there's Certainly. the mayor back. Hey, there's your, hello. Yes, go ahead, please. You're, you're, you're back. We can see you. Um, the I was a bit concerned at the big at, at the beginning when I saw the title of the committee, um, and but reading the uh, first paragraph, the background, that it, really the subjects of discussion is quite broad, especially the other matters which council determined would benefit from further discussion. So it's quite quite an open um, bucket there of I, things that we could discuss at that meeting. Hmm. Um, the, does it make, it, it, it doesn't say that, at least I can't see it, that this this committee will make a recommendation to go to go to a council me meeting for a vote. That's what I was saying. If if we yeah. want to add that that yes. phrasing, then that would ensure that this committee can't take actions directly. Yes, yes, yeah. I think I, it should. And we could just take that from the like, yeah. we just looked at it on their other committees, yeah. so we have the wording. Okay. I think that would be appropriate. Deputy Mayor. Uh, uh, Councillor Bali had a hand up before me. Do you still want to say something? I, I don't want to take the opportunity from you. Thanks, uh, thanks, Deputy Mayor. Yeah. I almost forgot, but I, I do think that um, I, I'm fine with the the name of the committee. It's straightforward. If it can't be an all uh, a council um, of the committee as as a title. Um, and I was in agreement also with uh, Councillor Feeney about having it, the, the idea of it being a fairly conversational committee so that we can talk about things like the off-leash business, uh, housing, and have it be rather free-flowing. And I'm also in agreement with Councillor Carver about, uh, and, and the CAO about having that other section so that it's then, these are things that are up for discussion, but then not, uh, that better than put, to, to council at a, at a council meeting. I think that that's all. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, uh, so based on what I've had, I, I think maybe it will uh, be beneficial to have a point, point C in the responsibilities whereby uh, something sort of uh, 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 agenda items can be generated by councillors uh, rather than just being referred to by council. Uh, I don't know how, because it talks about responsibilities rather than agenda items, but that uh, at least councillors have the opportunity to be able to just at the spur of the moment or during the day before the meeting be able to put a, agenda items there. That would be a good addition. I think. CAO? Oh, I'm just trying to help with the wording so we can we can incorporate it. Um, probably there's there's kind of two ways to do that, and it comes down to transparency to the public of what council's objective would be. So it can say see items added under approval of agenda. So we get all the way to the meeting, and then in the meeting, uh, the first thing is David saying as the chair. So what does anybody want to talk about today? Uh, but what that would mean is that we would only have on the agenda for the meeting to publish for the public, we wouldn't have any of those items. We would only have the items that had been referred by council. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we could make a little note, uh, maybe just so the public know that it is possible for councillors to add items at the time. Uh, or if we want councillors to, to have put the item onto the public, know what's going to be discussed, 
then we'd have to have the five day ahead window that we currently have for, for the agenda. So um, that'd be my question of, of those two options, which is more desirable, raising the thing at the meeting or having people know what's gonna be discussed. Well, we have that situation now. Tonight, uh, you know, we have an agenda that was published that the public was aware of and Councillor uh, Carver added an item to it. But it I was would added be, as a notice of motion where discussion is prohibited. So no one's missing but, the discussion. But I would be concerned that if we, that we would not want to be adding items to the agenda for this committee where there is no public involved and having a discussion that we might have otherwise had at a council meeting where the public would have access. If I could just comment on that, Your Worship, when we have a committee meeting, when we post the agenda, we post the agenda with a line, now that everything's electronic because of COVID, we mm -hmm. post the agenda with a line that says, if you would like to participate in this meeting, please contact and whoever the staff person, the specific staff resource is, by such and such a time on such and such a date. So while we wouldn't be, my understanding as it exists is that we wouldn't be planning to broadcast this on YouTube live, the public would still be able to- Have an opportunity. Uh, to be present virtually, yes. Yeah, so as, yeah, as we always give people an advance notice, if you request the Zoom link, you can get a, a, a viewer Zoom link for our committee meetings. Uh, but if, if, if the meeting were to start and Deputy Mayor brings up the issue of dogs on leashes, something that would have been to great interest to a lot of the members of the public who would have gotten engaged by getting a link uh, but would not even know that he was going to raise that topic and they would miss a discussion that they seem to be genuinely interested in. And that really is the argument for requiring the items to be added in advance so they can be published. Okay. Councillor Carver. Well, yes, just I'm wondering in the interests of time whether it would be worth considering breaking up the, uh, the motion or the items. Um, so going ahead with the motion on the two suspended committee um, items, but leaving the, um, the new proposed committee for the next time to add in or to defer the whole thing. I would prefer to, just in the interest of time, okay. so that staff can come back with some wording on this whole um, section of the new committee. So, mm -hmm. so leave out the establishment of that new committee for the Next opportunity, Councillor Kerver. Yes, in fact, it could it could be an opportunity for our very first. Uh, oh, we won't have it if we haven't approved it. <laughs> 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 Deputy um, Mayor, uh, 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 what I wanted to suggest is let's approve this as it is. We can always come and make a change later on, uh, rather than not approve it. Uh, so that this, yeah, we, we send the whole this, thing. yes, and then we can always make an amendment. Because I think, for, for my perspective, it's a small thing. We can always, uh, I, I can mm -hmm. always suggest something uh, uh, for an amendment, and we can consider that as a motion at a later date, I guess. Okay. Rather than throw it out. If Kirk? I could ask a question just for clarity of the minutes. So my understanding is that the motion that's on the floor is to adopt the committee policy with a further amendment to support, sorry, to suspend the age-friendly community committee to enable council uh, uh, to evaluate and review its terms of reference. Uh, but then there was also some discussion about the inclusion of another section on that all council, that proposed all council committee uh, where we would include the piece about uh, the committee discharges its responsibilities uh, via recommendation to council, et cetera, et cetera. So is that, um, sorry, I, uh, Deputy Mayor, you were saying, you know, propose as it is, I just want to be sure, are we including that committee discharges its responsibilities piece? Uh, yeah, as yeah, the, the mover, I understood yeah. that. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, technically, I was going to say it's up to the mover whether we are or not, because the, when she moved it, it was without that addition. So, Penny, yeah. do you want to take that piece of language, and is that okay? Yes, that's part of the discharge of the responsibilities is to make a recommendation. Okay. Council. So right. what we haven't done is we haven't added a C, so things still have to come through a council referral at this point, and then we can mm -hmm. we can look at the wording of a C subsequent to this passing or at, at another time. All right. Who seconded your motion, Councillor Carver? Councillor Wilson did. It was Councillor Wilson. There you go. Okay. You've heard the motion again and again and again. Uh, and with the notion that there will be an, a, a further adjustment to come on a separate motion at a future meeting, all in favor of the motion to approve these two policies as presented and amended, motions carried. Thank you, Councillor Carver. And just with respect to the idea that there will be a future motion, that'll have to be raised by a member of council. So, Deputy Mayor, if you if you want to do that, just make sure to let us know in the uh, when we ask for items for another meeting. So we don't right now we don't have any direction. Sure, we'll do that. Okay. Um, temporary borrowing resolution, CAO. This is the the the, the usual routine, I think. Uh, this should have been a routine year after year. I don't believe that we did it last year. I, I was not aware of this, and it came to, to my knowledge and to Luke's knowledge when we went for another TBR, and then we got into a discussion with Department of Municipal Affairs, and they said we've had a, a long, outstanding uh, short-term loan for which we're actually required to do the TBR renewal every year. So I don't believe we did do it last year. Um, but they didn't, they didn't mind that, but they said now that, you know, now that we have the chance, we should do it. Um, and we will be required to keep doing it for another five years. Um, Luke and I did check on, could we, you know, put it in through MFC now? Uh, but the answer is no, what you, once you haven't done, you can't do. So, uh, we'll, we'll okay. be doing this every year for the next five years. And, uh, and that's the, um, note there specifying that the TBR is the motion. So if somebody would like to read out some of the TBR at your discretion, uh, and I can scroll down to that, but we'll need to actually say the TBR is the motion. Uh, Mayor, I think that's the answer to the question about the, the fact that we can't avail ourselves of the Municipal Finance Corporation's dirt cheap interest rate at this time, but I'm glad you asked that question, Dylan. That just uh, once again illustrates your, uh, your diligence. Um, with that, I'm prepared to make a motion if, uh, Mayor, if you'd hear one. Yes, please. Mayor, uh, whereas section 66 of the Municipal Government Act provides the Council of the Town of Mahone Bay is subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, may borrow to expend funds for the capital purposes authorized by the statute. Whereas the Council of the Town of Mahone Bay has adopted a capital budget for this fiscal year as required by section 65 of the Municipal Government Act and uh, are so authorized to expend funds for capital purposes as identified in that capital budget. And whereas the specific amounts and the descriptions of the projects are contained in Schedule A, which is attached, be it resolved mm -hmm. that under the authority of Section 66, the Municipal Government Act, the Council of the Town of Mahone Bay borrow a sum not to exceed $174,800 for the purpose set out above, uh, subject to the approval of the Minister of Municipal Housing, uh, Municipal Affairs and Housing, that the sum be borrowed by the issue and sale of debentures by the Council of the Town of Mahone Bay to such an amount as Council seem, deems necessary, and that the issue of the debentures be postponed pursuant to Section 92 of the Municipal Government Act and a sum or sums not exceeding $174,800 in total be borrowed from time to time from any charter bank or trust company doing business in Nova Scotia, that the sum be borrowed for a period not exceeding 12 months from the date of the approval of the Minister of Municipal Affairs housing of this resolution and that the interest be payable on the borrowing be the rate that is agreed upon and that the amount to be repaid from the proceeds of the adventure when sold. You didn't didn't miss a step on that one. There you go. I would note that didn't, schedule didn't, the, the money that we're borrowing uh, from the bank uh, detailed in Schedule A is for street paving, 
and uh, street and sidewalk work on uh, Edgewater Street, which was done some years ago, but we're still paying for it. And because the loan only lasts for 12 months, we have to do then this every year to renew the process. The resolution well, lasts 12 months, yeah. Yeah, Councillor Wilson. I just second that motion. You second that motion? Thank you. Moved and seconded. You've heard the motion, all in favor, motions carried. Good show. We'll pay for our street paving. Let's go to uh, important item 6.5, recognition of donations during fiscal year 2019-2020. Uh, so this is the first time that we're doing this, but our new donations policy prescribes that we will uh, recognize donations in a report to council every year. It came yeah. mid-year, so we're actually doing 18 months at one time here, or two two years at one time, making up for that that half year. Um, so we've got a schedule attached. As always, I can take questions, but I also just wanted to put this on the screen because it would give an opportunity to recognize the um, many, many people who made donations uh, to the town and our centennial programs over the period. Uh, mm -hmm. so I just wanted to put that up there, but also I can take any questions if there are any. Okay. Questions? And well, sorry, Mayor, I'm not sure. Councillor Feeney has his hand. I'm sorry, Mayor, I'm not sure if you see my page. Um, just two questions, uh, Dylan. I just just to make sure we're on this. The practice is that donations are booked as revenue. I believe is that that must be how they. Are yeah, they're going to show up as revenue in the statements. Um, they're all yeah. transferred to a, a reserve or used for a specific expenditure in the year. I think they are as revenue if in in the term in the context of the cemetery commission. I'm just, if you wouldn't mind just taking that away. Um, the the other question was around the cemetery commission's annual receipt of. Um, of funding from St. James, if that's classified as a donation or not, Dylan, if you wouldn't mind just following up on that, uh, I'd appreciate that clarification. Yeah, great, great point. As I it, didn't even think about that, but it would be recognized here if it is a charitable donation. So we right. I, I just wanted to understand the um, consistency of how when when those funds come in, I, they're either a donation or a receipt from an obligation. And I know that's an outstanding question that council's had in the past. Just think. Uh, I think just locking down that that uh, those facts would be of value sometime. You know, it's not mission critical tonight, but you know, if you wouldn't mind taking that away and coming back to council with that that, that story, it would be uh, appreciated. Okay, thank you, Councillor Carver. Yes, I I just want to say I was so impressed with the uh, long list of, of tree donations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great testament to the uh, the campaign waged by staff um, in you know publicizing that particular project. I mean, it really was so exciting and so positive. So that's really impressive. Well deserved staff. Lots of trees out there waving in the breeze. Councillor Burdick. It's really wonderful to see that lengthy list of donations and donators. But I'd also like to uh, make a motion to receive this as information. Second that. Okay. 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 Thank you. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Motion's carried. Very good. Uh, nothing else? Let's go to the fire service battery purchase. So this is a straightforward one from time to time. Expenses come up through the year that were not budgeted. Um, it's especially convenient if those expenses would in any case be derived from a special purpose reserve that we have. So the request here is to purchase, uh, basically get council's authority to purchase some batteries for the fire department's uh, SCBA gear. Uh, we can we can get that approval tonight as a discrete uh, approval, or if it were waiting for the budget, I just want to put in context that what we would be doing tonight is we'd be going to our fire reserve and we'd be taking the money out. And what we'd be doing in April is we'd be going to that same reserve and we'd be taking yeah. the money out. 
So just for the record, for anybody watching, why would we do this yeah. now? Or why would we recommend not doing it at budget time? And that would be why, as we do have a reserve for this purpose. Okay. Deputy Mayor? A motion to uh, the council approve the budget allocation of 5,000 for the purchase of batteries to be paid from the fire equipment reserve. Okay, do we have a seconder? Second Carver. On the question, all in favor? Motion's carried. And, oh, 6.7, plan Mahone Bay update. Working our way through these staff reports. So uh, this is a uh, an ongoing project just for anybody viewing. Obviously the councillors are well aware of it, but um, we've now since July been working with uh, Upland Planning and Design, uh, Planning and Design, yeah, Planning and Design, um, to uh, begin the development of a, a new land use bylaw and municipal planning strategy. Um, the project was essentially broken into two phases. The first phase was to do background um, research, uh, public engagement work, uh, and come back to the steering committee for the project with some documents which would guide the second phase, much more detailed phase of drafting up sections of the proposed bylaws for public consideration and bring that back to council and the steering committee. So uh, according to the, the consultant's time frame, they, they were to complete the initial phase over the fall, and then uh, essentially we'll be beginning the new phase as soon as council can provide uh, go ahead uh, on the basis of the documents presented. So these documents were presented to the steering committee meeting in the fall. Um, there was some feedback received in response to that by Upland. They made a few more changes. They're being presented here, uh, both for council, but also to ensure that you know there's a public debut because the steering committee meetings are not public. And uh, so this is an opportunity for any further revision or uh, approval. And I, I just kind of want to stress that um, we may need to take the approach of make some changes now or consider some additional changes if there are any, because I, I know that the, um, uh, the council would like to see the next phase of work begin with the project. So I just want to note that uh, and I can take any questions. Councilor Carver. Yes, thanks. Um, it's a question for the CAO, really, uh, because I had sent in a list of um, questions and, and comments, none of which are substantive in any big way, um, other than the, I'm still concerned about the term co-housing. Um, and I wondered about uh, using something that referred more to shared housing. but. I, I guess in a larger way, I, I just want to ask, what should I do with these questions? Some of them are just um, not typos, but uh, not typos, but they are um, errors, spelling errors, and so on. Should I should I just send this whole list to um, to the uh, Uplands and and let them do whatever they want with it, or what do you suggest? Yeah, I mean, uh, my suggestion would be that, that we can, you know, we can do that, I can do that, or you can do that. Um, but if, if it's anything like that, where it's a non-substantive change, um, a correction, typo, uh, I, I think the rest of the council would probably agree tonight that, um, you know, those are always kind of welcome corrections. These are living documents. If somebody may catch that, we can make a change. But anything like the co-housing um, should, should be discussed with the council, because if it's not just a correction, then Jason won't yeah. know whether he's supposed to make the change. Yes, uh, yeah. Um, in, my, in my mind, the term co-housing specifically refers to the kind of project that uh, is currently happening in Bridgewater, the treehouse project. And that um, uh, sh shared housing or a shared housing in it, um, initiatives, I, I don't have a perfect answer for it, but I, I, I'm still concerned about just using only that term co-housing um, community. Do I have a better uh, suggestion for that? Um, shared housing initiatives. I mean, a co-housing is in a way a shared housing initiative because people are sharing the planning um, of a co-housing. Co um, they might also be sharing the plan to um, divide up a house 
uh, or you know have to share to share a whole house to share a household. Um, I just find that the term co-housing limits it to one kind, one type of um, shared housing. I'm just putting that out there. Deputy Mayor. Uh, uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, Councillor Penny would provide a, uh, maybe the particular reference that she's concerned about and how it's captured. Um, I'm trying to look for, for it, but I couldn't actually figure out. Did you say something, Penny? I did. I was on mute. It's on page 23. Um, Uh, Councillor Burdick. I do agree with Councillor Carver about that. There, there is a specificity to those terms that it might seem like that that is not a big difference, but there is a little bit of a difference there. So I would uh, be agreed uh, with that change about shared housing. And also what, um, if, if maybe all those smaller changes, if we send them to Uplands, because I, I have a few too, and then maybe CC the the uh, committee at the time, just so we can all be apprised of that. But that those would be lesser issues. Hmm. Okay. You're referring to comments that were made by the public, so I, I don't think that they would change these. I think that's why they haven't changed them because they said things we mm -hmm. heard included. Uh, so somebody must have mentioned co-housing by name to them. And then all they're doing here is this is in the thematic analysis section. They're saying I things see. we heard in the community included, and then that was one of them. So sorry, I, I didn't catch that in the written thing, Penny. I should have caught that when you said page 23 there. But that, yeah. that's what page 23 is. It's not a, it, it's just what they heard. OK, I'll, I'll look at that again. Um, and I'm still not, sh not sure what to do with the rest of these. I mean, look, listening to Councillor Burdick's uh, suggestion of sending more of these suggestions back to um, Uplands. Uh, so you have suggested that sending the, the typos, that kind of suggestion, but the more substantive ones you did recommend discussing here at Council first. Yeah, um, I thought Councillor Burdick was also talking about kind of the less substantive stuff, but yeah. Yeah, if there is anything that's that's more that, that anyone that you think anyone might differ on, um, then then Jason won't be able to do anything with it. Right. Okay. Period. So <laughs> it is the idea of allowing more than four unrelated inhabitants in a, a housing unit addressed in the um, in the document. Uh, was was there something in particular you were looking for, or? Um, well, because because, because it's, a, it's a way of, um, maybe this isn't the, the time to do it, but this may come later on in the process, because having, at the moment, our land use bylaw essentially says you can't have more than four unrelated people in, in a housing unit. Is that correct? Uh, I'm actually not familiar with the reference. I'd have to look into it. Okay. Uh, all right. So I, I, I may have that wrong. It may be, uh, you, you may be correct. I just yeah. didn't want to be trying to answer on the fly without looking it up. No, okay. Okay. Um, so the, another one that I th thought might ha have some, um, discussion is about the, the use of the term settlement. Um, he provided, they provided some history and then talked about settlement since 1754. And so I suggested inserting the word European settlement to make that distinction. Is that acceptable to people to send that? People are nodding, some people. Sorry to ask you for a page reference, but do you have a page reference for that one? Penny? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Page 47. I think you did provide a page reference. Yes, I, I did. This was all in writing yesterday. Yeah. Deputy Mayor, you had a comment? Yes, I had a comment. Uh, I hadn't picked up on that. Uh, my, my view would be to, to even leave it out completely. 
uh, wondering why it's necessary to mention that. Was this under the, I'm, I'm not finding it on, um, oh, sorry, page 41. Page 47, it was. 47 of the, it's in the. Oh, book. I'm sorry. Okay. Is this particular, um, sorry, Mayor, J Councillor Carver, if you'll indulge me, is this, if I could just ask this question of the CAO, is this document a document of council and of, is this a town document or is this the consultant's document that influences the inevitable land use bylaw? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, these are presented in the, and the consultant takes pains to say that like these are draft documents that are used to guide the bylaw development process. Um, so council is not saying that, you know, we adopt this vision or principles on a go forward basis, other than that they guide the municipal planning strategy review process. Uh, one thing that's noted in the staff report is that at the end, when, when council is presented with a draft municipal planning strategy, uh, it does include statement of values and principles in that document, uh, likely to be based on these but it wouldn't be until the council actually approves that document that something goes forward and is a, a town document to, to your question. So mm -hmm. these documents are to guide the process. Um, council does need to sign off on them in that context so that the developers of the con contractor can continue to work on the process, but they're not, um, they're not planning documents. If you know, in the MGA assigns a specific weight to the municipal planning strategy and land use bylaw, these are not those documents. These are just uh, draft documents to guide the process. Okay. When do we engage the public with these documents, CAO? So these documents have been, um, as since the steering committee meeting, uh, available in draft form on the project website. Um, in terms of asking for public feedback on these documents, that's not what they what they intend to do with them. Um, they intend to use these documents to create specific sections or, or, or you know, uh, proposals that would be put out for public um, response. So, I mean, these documents are statements of research and, and engagement findings. Um, mm -hmm. So they won't ask people, what did you think about the findings of what we asked you last time? But they'll use them to, to draft a new section based on that. And then they'll ask people, what do you think about this section? Okay. Um, may, may I yes, may I respond to uh, the deputy mayor's uh, comment about the settlement? I, I don't I don't take issue with the term set, settlement. Well, it, maybe it's maybe the word could be different, but it's because it's referring to the development of the town. Maybe maybe there's a better word than settlement. Um, yeah, yeah, but I hadn't seen how it is how it's written, so I've, I've, I've looked at it. So uh, it's part of some thoughts that I'm, I'm glad you raised it. So one of the things I would suggest would be that that paragraph that refers to settlement, uh, from my perspective, maybe needs to be removed uh, because it doesn't add that much value to, to the document. It, it has the potential to bring controversy that you don't necessarily need, if that makes sense. So this section that says, the settlement of the area first by French Acadians followed by German Protestants uh, up to 1919, my suggestion would be just to remove that. I, I If I could comment, I, I think, you know, the reason that they're um, trying to do something here has been to reflect the value of heritage and as it is currently to, phrased in our, in our current bylaws, including the land use bylaw, it, it absolutely is a, a very opaque and definitive reference to European architecture of a particular period. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's, it's a very fundamental question. It's a good question for council to talk about. Um, if we value that, which we do, we have a committee for, we have bylaws around it that entrench it, um, it's gonna be necessary to make statements to define it. And those statements are always going to define it as architecture that is from uh, a, a colonial period if it's colonial period architecture so uh, I, I guess what i would suggest is council may want to have a deeper conversation about the value of that heritage 
but as long as it's going to be something we attempt to preserve, we're going to have to define it, and we're going to have to define it with some reference to historical periods. We could try to find more language, but taking it out entirely means probably taking out the emphasis, maybe justly, on preserving that heritage architecture. Yeah, that, that would be an interesting conversation. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think one of my, my worries is uh, living it as is would, would be an insult to First Nations um, to a certain extent. Uh, their, their heritage is also important. If we're giving one heritage impo import over the, another, then we're creating a situation that's uh, anyways. It, that, I, I mean, yeah. do, doesn't doesn't this section follow along with our land acknowledgement protocols, as well as outlining sort of the you know, the background around of the community since, you know, 1753. Councilor Wilson? Oh, sorry, Councilor Fee, I thought you were finished. I, I just, I, I thought that this was a, that this aligned well with, with what we've recently introduced as our land acknowledgement process. Mm -hmm. We are just another small piece in the, in the continuum, I think, of the town. Councilor Wilson, you had a comment? Uh, yes, two, please. Uh, perhaps we could just take out the word, the uh, politically inappropriate word settlement and leave in the highly appropriate word colonization. colonization. Okay. We could take care of that section. And I just as a matter of information, I looked up the MGA or the land use file, I'm sorry. And in fact, we are, we are limited to four housing units in a renovation of a house, but not thing is silent on how many people. So each housing unit presumably could have, you know, a family. Okay. Alice, Burdick, Councillor Burdick? Uh, yeah, I, I do, I understand this, the, the language there and the form is, is um, it does prioritize the um, French and uh, other European settlers there and there is a specific reference to the use of the land by Mi'kmaq versus the lasting legacy of the later uh, the European settlers. My suggestion with this is that because this is obviously uh, it is important to describe the area properly and respectfully to everybody um, and is that maybe we can review this section um, in terms of in, ter in terms of uh, some of the of the words used, um, and and then and then reintroduce it. I would like to sit with that a little longer. Thank you for pointing it out, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor and, and Councillor Carver. Both of those things you started with the European settle settlers, and and that the the term settlement is an interesting one. It raises all kinds of questions. Um, I'd be curious to see if there's other ways that we could describe our area as combining all of these elements or being structured from them without prioritizing. Rafini? So, Mayor, like I think as the CAO said, this document, which is not a town document, it's a document from the consultants, is being, is generated to allow us to inevitably get to a land use bylaw. None of this section is going to be in the bylaw. And the, the, the only reason I believe it's in this um, con consultant's document is to provide an introduction to the area, the idea of built heritage. Um, so like I think the salient point here is we're inevitably trying to get to a land use bylaw um, and we'll preservation of our built heritage be part of that, I think it will be. So could that section be more elegantly um, fronted? Maybe so, but I think the, like the intent here is really to um, introduce the idea of built heritage, which is something that's, you know, really what we're, we're getting at, something that was between 1753 and 1919. Um, 
and and how to, how to do that in an elegant way. My, my sense of things is the collateral supporting documentation that we're talking about right now will never, you know, that's never going to get to the next conversation anyway. So um, I, I do think the points were well made, um, but, you know, whether we eliminate the section as, uh, as the deputy mayor suggested, you know, or, or, or leave it in, I, I'm not, I'm not sure um, how impactful it, it really is at this point. Like at the end of the day, we're trying to craft the bylaw and where this is really collateral material to help us get there. CAO, you had your hand up, then Councillor Burdick and then the deputy mayor. CAO? Yeah, it, was, uh, it was somewhat similar to Councillor Ruffini's point just in that um, I would strongly suggest that council think about this in terms of where built heritage fits into the land use bylaw process. So if we're soliciting a broader discussion about built heritage and we've asked the consultants to do that, then I think it isn't bad that it be provocative. Um, you know, we may want to consider how, but what we're trying to do is provoke a conversation. And if there is a need to move away from considering 1753 to 1919 as a right. period that is sacrosanct because of its importance to European colonists, then maybe we need to actually start changing the substance of the bylaws and not just how we're presenting the information. So I think it would be good if we encourage a discussion about this in the next phase of the consultation. Um, council just may wish to put in the motion, for example, um, with a special emphasis on um, uh, considering the, you know, the heritage uh, provisions. Like I wouldn't say that you wanna remove it unless what you're saying is you want to remove built heritage. And if you're saying that, then we don't necessarily need to have the broader conversation. We've already made a, a decision. Thank you. Councillor Burdick? I think I, I do agree that it shouldn't be, um, it, this is a guiding document. However, I think maybe there are, a, we, what we could do is also do make these changes. And because it is a changing document also, do what we were going to do with the uh, with the other things and send it to Uplands with our suggestions um, and CCing each people uh, in there. Um, or the, the and part of that could also include being much more specific about the built heritage aspect of it in that introduction, because even though that is what follows, it's not the, the term settlement there. <laughs> does not describe housing specifically or, or churches, uh, whatnot. It's implied, but it's not specific. So maybe if that's more specific in there, and then it could just be sent on um, and then reviewed. Okay, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I, I, I think that um, I do understand the elements that this might not be viewed as a very, uh, I guess, germane document to the entire process but it's a piece of document or it's communication that as council will be putting out to the public and basically representing to a certain extent our thoughts and, and feelings about particular issues. So I, I would want us to be a bit nuanced about how we communicate that. Uh, just because it has happened in the past and has been communicated in a particular way in the past, I, I don't think we should continue but to perpetuate that. And I think there are some problematic elements that uh, Councillor Kava has raised that we need to address. So I, I understand the expediency and, and the need to move at speed, but I think uh, this particular, uh, uh, the, the introduction and the historical overview, they probably need a little bit of fine tuning before they go out from my perspective. Uh, they, they, they have the potential to rub uh, our First Nations brothers the wrong way. And I think if we see that, then we need to rectify that. Okay. Councillor Curver. Yeah, I think in that paragraph, I, I, I do think it, it needs to be addressed, uh, but that, that sentence, that whole sentence could be redrafted um, and referring only to built, the built heritage. To just take out the reference to settlement entirely because it has such enormous connotations uh, because we are talking about the built heritage uh, and is um, and we just leave it up to uplands to redraft that so mm -hmm. that it's re referring to 
the built heritage rather than to the settlement or colonization. Okay. I'm looking at the CAO. <laughs> CAO, do you have a comment? Um, yeah, two comments. I'm going to make one last plug for the fact that what is actually problematic isn't the language, it's the rules that exist, the actual programs that we have. <laughs> so um, just to, to the deputy mayor's point is, yeah, there is something pretty offensive in the way that it's being discussed. But if you're offended by that, then there's something more offensive in the actual rules that put a specific priority on certain forms of architecture. <laughs> um, so anyway, that, that discussion needs to be front and center. And the question is, how do we have that conversation? And I think that's where I would suggest that, you know, to Councillor Kyber's point is, we're going to have to find a way to make this motion to say to Upland, uh, we approve the draft documents, but would like to see uh, alternate wording within the heritage section to make it clear that this is a conversation about architecture and, and, and build heritage, um, that this document is meant to encourage a discussion about that. And, uh, and maybe we can still make reference to the periods of the architecture because they are factual. It's the prioritization that they receive from the town that needs to be talked about. So, yeah, fair can enough. You, can you, can you, CAO, um, uh, convey that to, to Uplands? Well, I'll just put the motion back on the screen quickly, just to kind of because there was a there was a suggested motion here. One one moment, and I'll do that. Yeah. A lot of scrolling. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're back up to the staff report. So the motion that was there was the council set the report, uh, draft background report, what we heard report and draft statement of principles, vision and goals for the Mahone Bay, or the plan Mahone Bay process. And I would say you could leave that same wording and say, um, and that uh, council direct uh, staff to uh, work with Upland uh, planning and design to present a revised wording to the introduction to the heritage preservation section, uh, reflective of uh, the need to encourage a respectful conversation around uh, the value of heritage uh, to the Plan Mahone Bay process. Something along those lines? Something along those lines. Who, who made the motion? Or we haven't got a motion yet. Don't have one yet. We don't have a motion yet. No, okay. Uh, Clarify, sorry, that was a lot, uh, if I may. <laughs> uh, present a revised wording to the heritage preservation section reflective of the need to express, and I, I'm not sure about it after that. I would say um, to encourage a respectful conversation around the, uh, around the subject of heritage in our um, Plan Mahone Bay process. Thank you. Build heritage, right? Built it, it, we say build heritage in the motion. The section title might need some tweaking because the section title is just heritage preservation. And in light of this conversation, it does sound a little concerning. I would just ask the question though about the document, this document, you know, really, um, like how should I view this particular document relative to say the transportation strategy slash plan document that came from CBCL? So it's a good comparison. Uh, you right. know, when, when we had CBCL do two phases of engagement, just like we've done here, the first phase of engagement was generation of concepts and ideas. And then they went out and they presented that report and they said, what do you think about right. these concepts and ideas? <laughs> and then we got that report back. And obviously for a lot of people, and this is probably why we're discussing it so much tonight, that right. first report was seen as, oh, councils that already made all these decisions. And that's how right. many people reacted to it. But it is much like that first thing. It is just floating these concepts and encouraging those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it is, it's both. It, it is exactly that, but it's also yeah. seen by many people in a, in a different light once it's out, so. You know, I, you know I, I, I think this was a very uh, worthwhile conversation. Um, like personally, I don't, I, I don't think that this document is a reflection of council. It's, it's a reflection of the consultant and how mm -hmm. skilled the consultant's messaging is and the deficiencies in the, in the message. Being respectful, I think we all agree that when we got the original CBCL transportation document, there were things that 
never saw the light of day and got shelved and we'll never talk about it again, hopefully. But, but, you know, that being said, I mean, I always find that there's a lot of value in Councillor Carver's, you know, edits. Um, she brought up some other things like Princesses Inlet versus Princess Inlet. Like, I mean, there's, you I mean, there are real, there are, there are real issues. If, so I guess we're, we're on, I guess from my perspective, it's like, if we're going to own it, this is going to be a town document and we're like, we need to own it. Then like, why, why are we rushing this through at 917? Like, let's do what we always do and take another month to edit it to our heart's content until we're comfortable with it. Or if we're conf if we're comfortable saying we're only receiving this report from the consultant and that's what it is. It's the, it's a consultant's report, then fair enough. I'm, I'm prepared to move it along, but you know, personally, I don't think we can, we should do, we should go halfway. We either edit this until we're comfortable with every word and every message that it sends, or B, we say, thank you very much, Upland, for your report. And we'll use this report with all of its greatness and some of its flaws to move us forward to the next step. Um, but I, I don't like the idea of saying we're going to take part of it, but, but draft part of it. Well said, Councillor Feeney, that's the distinction between accept and adopt. So if you want to get technical, the motion is phrased accept, not adopt, because we're not adopting these as town documents. We're accepting the report okay. that will be used in this process. Fair enough. Councillor Burdick. I'm absolutely in agreement with uh, everything Councillor Feeney just said. It is a really, it is a, it's sort of a strange document in that sense. It's like if we, we my, my tendency would be to go in with and do a full edit on it, but it is somebody else's thing. So mm -hmm. I, if we are simply accepting it, then we can accept it and then send modifications to them CCing. Deputy Mayor. Uh, if I understand this right, isn't accepting it saying that, yes, we accept it, and then they can post it as part of the documents that will be used in this process, right? So basically, in, in accepting, we'll be adopting it. Because in, in, the, in essence, uh, the, the, the public will not see a difference between Upland and the town. Upland is representing the town in that process. And it's the difference between proposed for consideration or we've already made our decision. And that's yeah. where people didn't see that distinction in our previous process. But I do think that that's just a, a factor of communication and, and emphasis and doing your job with that because you want to propose things for consideration. I mean, that is an important thing that council wants to be able to do. So you have to find some way to do that and have the public understand that actually they're being consulted and that's good. Yeah. Yeah, so from that perspective, I'd, I'd agree with the uh, Councillor Feeney that let's let's do a good job and finish with it before we we yeah. move to accept it. Is, is there a, is there a great rush, uh, CAO, to get this off our desk uh, in in short order, or can we take the time to uh, make the kinds of adjustments and changes and edits that Councillors Burdick and Carver and the Deputy Mayor and and Councillor Feeney are suggesting? I would say that there is some hurry, but it's imposed by council. So we went out, we hired this company with an expectation that they would complete this process by July. So they were to begin this phase of engagement in January. So where they have not done that and what they've essentially been waiting on is this acceptance of these documents that would then be used to create discussion in the next phase. Um, they, they are currently waiting on that. So. I can go back to them and kind of ask, but you know, I, I think that they are required by us to hold at this stage until we ask them to continue. And the longer we wait, the longer we delay the eventual conclusion. If, if they're counting on the timeline that they've pitched on, um, uh, we may pay more to have them continue to work into the fall if that's, you know, but that's our prerogative if that's what we wish to do. Um, I just think it's important that council do understand that, yeah, there may be a, a consequence there because we asked for the timeline that would it would have them moving ahead now with the next phase. When was the last uh, municipal planning strategy land use bylaw created? 2008. Yeah. 2008. 13 years ago. And we're talking about delaying by a month something that may last for 13 years. I don't know. 
We're going to try to make it only last five this time. It's only supposed, <laughs> it's only supposed to be five. Exactly. <laughs> Councilor Carver? Yeah, I, I thought it was overall a really good document. Um, it gave such a good flavor and sense of, of the town. I mean, they, I, you could really see how much homework they had done. Um, and I, I really, I love the whole heritage section because <laughs> I, I, you know, the heritage committee, advisory committee. Um, I, I would be comfortable with staff taking these concerns and working through them with Uplands. Um, and in, in addition, as Councillor Burdick suggested, uh, other edits that might have been suggested, because if this is going out, um, I mean, we have to accept that there may be some imperfections or some spelling errors or whatever, but um, some of, I'd be happy if the staff worked on this with um, Uplands and we saw it again, I think you said, um, Mr. CAO, that you said that it would come back in Jan at the end of January, is that right? I don't know if I said that, but I, I think if we could get some specific direction for rewording, I would really like to get get it yeah. back in front of council at your next yeah. meeting. So yeah, if at all possible, we would only mm -hmm. be delaying till your next your January 28th meeting, yeah. um, if, if there is a direction to bring back some additional wording. Right. In, in your answer to me, about the written thing that I submitted yesterday, you said uh, approve, approve the documents with amendments which staff could pass on to Uplands. Um, for the yeah, final if we're clear revision. on what we want done, we can approve yeah. it with amendments now, yeah. or if we're not clear, we can direct staff this meeting to bring back a draft to the next yeah. meeting. So, I mean, so what I'm hearing is that we would like to hear a, a a, re a real revision of that statement about settlement. Um, and if you could convey that, as well as the, the smaller, less substantial edits. Is that more or less what we've talked about? Or the co-housing one? Yeah, if we're not ready to do, well, I think the co-housing one we've discussed is now it's the way it's phrased is it says, we heard from the public about co-housing. Oh yes, right, right, we did, yeah. Good. But if okay. we did, instead of the motion to accept, if we have yeah. the night, just forget that motion and just say council direct staff to work with Upland to present a, a, a rephrased uh, heritage section introduction to council's January 28th meeting, uh, we could certainly do that. And, uh, and everybody's point, it's two weeks, be as quick as we can and hopefully then um, can get on with the rest of the process of, with council being satisfied rather than rather than. Well, I'd be prepared to make that motion, what you just said. <laughs> um, okay. Well, he said, Councillor Burdick? I was gonna second that motion. Okay. <laughs> we have a mover and a seconder on the motion. Mayor, oh. Mayor just, uh, just sorry, just so I understand the motion. The motion is to um, ex accept the report, um, but there's no uh, acceptance directs... in it anymore. <laughs> sorry, no. sorry. What uh, are we accepting the report and and asking for staff to make modifications to the built heritage section, or are we? The motion that I have now is that council directs staff to work with Upland to present a rephrased heritage introduction introduction section for council's next meeting. That's right. So no so acceptance. Exactly was at the end of the month. Gotcha. Okay. So that was the motion. And then what do we do with all the other smaller edits? Just send them along to you? Yeah, or yeah you if we can get those in, in the same yeah. time frame. You'll forward them. We okay. Pick them up in the same time frame and get them in the next edit. That would, that would be ideal. So if you have okay. anything, Alice, if you have some, we send them in to us, Mo and I, and then we'll make sure Jason also can get those in there. Okay. You've heard the motion. On the question, all in favor, motion's carried. Thank you. Well, let's go to item seven. Uh, do we want to look at city committee appointments right now, tonight? I'm only thinking of the time element. It is 930. And we do have a closed session item on on contract negotiations. So I just, uh, in terms of the committee appointments, it's certainly at council's discretion. Um, just want to note that there are some committee meetings that would happen potentially between this meeting and your next meeting. So if council does opt to wait on this item, then we would have to make sure to notify 
council members that those meetings would not be taking place, which is totally yeah. fine. No. Well, I don't know. Shall we continue uh, with the committee appointments? Uh, I mean, Mayor, I'd, I'd I'd recommend we we defer that to the next um, to the next council meeting and provide that you know scoring, have that conversation. Just make sure everybody is okay with the process. I know that the process has evolved, uh, I think, favorably, and I know this is always a pet peeve of Councillor Carver historically about making sure. Uh, but I do think it's improved a lot from from my vantage point. But I do think uh, if you know if we're not going to put too many committees at risk, um, you know, I'd recommend we defer this item to the next meeting. Okay. Can I just um, I just want to check with our clerk if that would be okay on which meetings? Like I know asset management's in there. That's no problem if we need to defer that one. Um, but uh, is PAC included in this conversation? And if so, is that going to present an issue? We do have a PAC meeting scheduled with a specific agenda item, um, a report that was commissioned quite some time ago, uh, referred from a request from a resident. Oh. So um, wondering so we if we could, would... do, we could do PAC appointment tonight, maybe? Clerk? Yes, yeah, so we have a PAC meeting, as you noted, that is does have a specific agenda item. Uh, that's scheduled for Tuesday next week. Uh, just to fully answer the question, that would also be asset management and audit next week. Um, and now with the uh, um, suspension of AFCC, then that would also be police advisory board at the end of the month. Okay. I, I mean, they're all um, rescheduled. We can all we can reschedule all of them, but um, as the CAO noted, there is that uh, one particular agenda item um, for PAC whenever they meet next. Well, Mayor, how's this for a compromise? How about we proceed with Deuced with after a, a three minute break? A three minute maybe, break, maybe even five minutes if you'll really if you'll really indulge us. Well, we should have done that at nine o'clock, but who knew? We'll take five minutes. Thank All you. Right? All right. Mm -hmm. That's the note for everyone. Um, as far as I know, we continue to stream to YouTube over our five minutes. So uh, you can turn your cameras off and your mics off if you want, but just be aware Anybody of that. Anybody wants to, you know, sing a song, maybe do a little dance or something? I don't know. To... Okay. I thought we had a short agenda tonight. The short ones are the longest. It's what my wife always says when I tell her I might actually see her that night. It's a, don't count on it. The short meetings always run the longest.
Mm -hmm. Everyone's back. Sorry, I just didn't turn on my camera. I'm, I was working in the background. Oh, yeah. Working, working, working 18 hours a day. I did the Already in front of the computer, I could be getting another email or two done. The spreadsheet is not, I got two computers running CAO. So, um, so Clark, we don't, we don't have the spreadsheets on the screen, do we? Or does CAO have them? I do have the sum spreadsheet, but uh, I don't believe we put that up, right? That's okay. uh, confidential. So, Did we want to look at the PAC for next week? It's up to council if you want to look at all of it or some of it. <laughs> Councillor Feeney, what's that mean? In for a penny, in for a pound, Mayor, at this point. So okay, I would say full, full steam ahead. Let's go. Before the Arctic, what do they call it? The Arctic cold bomb hits us in three days. So let's start with the PAC then. Uh, based on the scoring that was done and averaged, who would the nominees be for that committee? So everybody has the document, I believe. Um, to my recollection, we normally do this. Somebody would would make a proposal with the names. I, Maureen, you may need to step in because this is a, I've only done this once before with this council. This is something you guys have rehearsed over, but. Yes, traditionally uh, staff have combined the scores that were received and uh -huh. that has been sent out to all members of council. And those scores are a guideline. There is nothing in our policy that says the council has to a point based on scores that is a guideline for council to take into consideration. I would note though, I'm not sure that we have a uh, councillor Carver back yet. There she is. Okay, um, I think I answered that question. If there was anything else. Okay. A deputy mayor, I'm sorry, sir. No, no, that's okay. Uh, you, you folks will not like me for the question I'm about to ask. Uh, I, I've used this sheet before uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, as, a, as a committee member, but I was curious about how, how, uh, how it was arrived at in, 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 in the sense that that's a tool that's being used to evaluate who, who, who gets I guess councillors get to choose uh, because I, I'm a little bit concerned about um, uh, the skew that the classifications that are in there provide or lead towards. Uh, there's because basically the, the 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 sheet seems to be prioritizing committee experience, education, uh, past attendance on council committees, and that would. Uh, to a certain extent be uh, weeding out particular sections of the population. Uh, uh, and I'm a little bit concerned about that as, a, as an element. Uh, so I was curious about as to how that the document came, came, came to be created and whether that's how we want to continue evaluating how people get on committees. This is a document that council developed. I know it's been refined quite a bit over the years. I believe two years ago was the last time it was reviewed and there were some changes made at that time. Yeah. And, and so my, my concern is about, the, there's, I, I get the sense there's a little bit of elitism in it. And, and I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not trying to accuse us as being elitist, but that's what would skew. Basically, if I look at how it, uh, pro, I guess apportions merit. It has to be you have to have a particular education, 
a particular kind of experience um, and to have been, if you are on council committees before, then you get more, I guess, preference, um, which will, cre will end up creating, I guess, an elite group of people to a certain extent. Um, Councillor Kerber? I, I, I fully support uh, the Deputy Mayor's co comments and um, uh, because <laughs> we've discussed concerns about the pro this process for many years, but I think we're stuck with it for now. And I came tonight prepared to make a motion tonight that we review the process yet again. I mean, we give it a really good thorough scrub this time. Um, so, but I think we're, we're, we have to use this tool tonight, I believe, if we're going to select committee members. It's... Mm. Well, and, I mean, and, I guess as it was introed by the clerk, I'm just gonna remind that uh, you, you have this, so yes, you have to have it because you do have it. You don't have to, it, it's actually not even um, currently required that the scoring be used to make the appointment. So uh, that, that there's no, there's nothing binding there, I guess I should state. So you do have it and we're stuck with it because it is what we have tonight, but, uh, but council uh, can consider other uh, factors. And I think in, in fact, the, the numerical scores that's developed by this process is not the determining factor. Council, yeah, that was what I was trying to say. <laughs> council ultimately can say, I know what the numbers say, but for whatever reason, uh, person X I feel would be a better member for that committee and council can agree or disagree. <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, Mayor, I think it's, you know, quite evident what the, where the limitations are. We had, uh, I recall uh, four years ago, we had uh, we had a chartered accountant apply for the asset management committee uh, for the uh, for the audit committee and come in last in the scoring. So I mean, from time to time, weird things do happen. I think the mayor, the deputy mayor, has identified a couple um, specific uh, challenges we have to overcome, especially for a town that has a lot of new new people moving to the area. One one of the yeah. best, one of the most. Uh, I think gratifying uh, aspects of this particular list is how many recent re new residents have put their names forward to to serve on committees. Um, mm. If um, I think, given the uh, the commentary, which was uh, seems pretty appropriate for us to have a, a follow up discussion, um, maybe we should proceed with the PAC tonight. Um, I think there are a couple. Uh, clear candidates who, uh, who uh, are, have been identified on that scoring sheet methodology for all of its uh, uh, wants. Um, and if we were willing to proceed with that item tonight, maybe we can uh, push the other items and have a more fulsome conversation uh, two weeks out, as well as maybe, you know, via email, get together with some thoughts about how to proceed um, for the meeting on the 28th. Okay. Is that an option? Uh, therefore, I would I would make a motion, Mayor. If you, uh, I'd move that um, John Bibesheimer and Brian Palferman uh, be appointed to as um, community members to the PAC. Okay, uh, Clerk, how many citizen appointments are there on PAC? Just give oh, me one four. second. It's late. Oh. I'm going to double check. Okay. Pardon, pardon me. <laughs> we used to have two. I don't know how many is all in the uh, statement, but I think it's uh, two was what we had, I think, before. Was this really? I thought, okay. We had at least three before. Yes. I think Councillor Carver's bid for four might be the winner. Well, well I, I, when I was trying to work with the spreadsheet and to figure out who was who and how, how many we were looking for, I did look at the, uh, the committee terms of reference and I 
wrote down four for the okay thank that, you that committee mayor uh, then be happy to make it and amend that motion to also include um catherine mccarran mm -hmm. um and pardon me and um and bill lewis as members of the pac Okay, so that would be ben, Bill Lewis, Catherine McCarran, John B. Besheimer, and Brian Palferman. Yes. To be appointed to the PAC. I would second that. Wilson? Councillor Wilson seconds it, I think. Deputy Mayor? Uh, in, in light of in, in light of my mentioning about the uh, elitist element of this, the ranking system that we have, I would propose that uh, uh, at least in one of those positions we consider. I think there was there was somebody else, um, uh, Glenn Pasture. I don't know how we handle that. Well, there's a motion on the floor. We, if we, that motion's been moved and seconded. Yeah. Um, we need to motor, vote on that motion, but we could get an amendment to that motion. Uh, the, the, I thought there, was, there should be a question to the motion. Or... Well, yeah, but, but yeah. before we get to that, you can make an amendment. Uh -huh. and the amendment would be that um, one person, person X, would be replaced by the individual you're suggesting. Uh, I, I would note that Mr. Lewis has also indicated an interest asset. in asset management and the audit committee. We could... We, slide him to one of those two and put Mr. Pasha uh, in the uh, PAC. Will that amendment be okay with you, Councillor Feeney? Um, you the know, I've heard, so, so on my, on my turn, you know, I've had a situation where we've had this I've always been fall. I've always followed the scoring sheet with all of its problems as a reflection of council's overall thinking. Yes. So I personally, I'm reticent to um, introduce any new variable into the into the cat into the decision making other than the scoring sheet. If we decide that the scoring sheet is no longer appropriate, I'm totally okay with deferring the discussion until we establish a, di a different process. But while while we have while we have this process, even given its obvious limitations, and I take the deputy mayor's point personally, I'm I'm reticent to defer from the scoring sheet. Okay, <laughs> Councillor Carver. Um, I think there is uh, certainly precedent for um, shifting things a little bit when um, applicants have a first and second choice, so that some shifting has been has actually happened in order to fill spots based on the first and second choices. Um, so uh, I certainly support the idea that, that there's some flexibility. And I also just looked up again, the planning advisory committee, and it's up to four public members. Okay. Up to four. Councillor Burdick. All right. Um, my understanding is that the, the rubric is a, a guide, but it's not the sole deciding factor in, in no. determining who's going to be on committee committees uh, as citizens. Um, I think I do think it's a good idea to have people who are more um, 
who might not fill in other certain blanks in the rubric, but would fill in others that might might not be represented there. Also mixed in with every with their, with other folks who are interested. I also just wanted to double check because it was my understanding that we would be referring to the people applicants oh, by the letter rather than their full names, uh, because this is obviously something that everybody can see if they want to. <laughs> that's, that, that's a good point. Okay. Good point. Okay. Yeah, the distinction there is when, when the motion is made, then that's usually when it, so um, as it happened, the discussion followed the motion, which is, I think, why the names were, were referenced, but. Okay, well, we've already used the names. Um, yeah, and Lewis. Well, we do have a motion on the floor that's been moved and seconded. So just procedurally where the friendly amendment was rejected, uh, if, as I think you were saying, uh, Mr. Mayor, if, if Deputy Mayor wants to make an amendment to change out one of the names that can be voted on first before we would vote on the, the, the substance the actual of the main motion. motion. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah, I will, but there have to I, be a specific I, amendment put forward for voting on. I won't be I won't be uh, offended if the if the motion's defeated and we retable a new motion with a different mix that we can find consensus around. And that's so, another way to do it. Just I go mean, to that, the vote. I and think then, yeah. that I think that achieves the same that that achieves the same um, goal and objective, while allowing me to stand on the uh, on the hill of following the rubric with all of its flaws. <laughs> So if you would indulge me with entertaining that moat, which I'm expecting will be defeated, then we can proceed to the deputy mayor's new motion with a different mix that I'm sure will be approved. And if the motion doesn't fail? If the motion doesn't fail, I'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> but Okay, on that, you have the motion moved and seconded. Uh, they were... Uh, the candidates were A, G, J, and K, or I and K, rather, right? All in favor of the original motion? <sighs> that motion is defeated. We would entertain a new motion for appointments to the PAC committee. I'd, I'd like to move that uh... We appoint, now should I say the names or the, the letters? The names are going to have to be in the motion for us to appoint. The names, the people, yeah, so the right. names are in the actual appointment documentation. So, okay. Go so, ahead with the names. Yeah, I move that we appoint uh, John Bibishma. Bibishima. Uh, um, I believe, uh, I, I don't want to mess up your, your list. Um, the next one would have been uh, Blair, Michael Blair. Uh, no, uh, no? The no next I think because it was his second choice. So we oh, were okay. Yeah, Bill Lewis would be the second person. But but uh, uh, no, no, it it won't be Bill Lewis. It would be Brian Paul Freeman. Can okay. I uh, possibly assist the deputy mayor and yeah, say please. thank you <laughs> that the original motion put yeah. forward by Councillor Feeney, which was just defeated, yeah. was that John Bebesheimer, Brian Palfreyman, Catherine McCarran, and Bill Lewis be appointed. Yeah. That was the motion that was just defeated. And, and so the, mo the motion I'd like to put is that we replace uh, Bill Lewis in that motion with uh, Glenn Pasture. Okay, so that would be John Bebesheimer, Catherine McCarran, Brian Palferman and Glenn Pasha would be appointed to the PAC. Deputy Mayor, is that your motion? Yes, please. Okay. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Burdick. And now that there is a seconder, I just want to know because it did come up in discussion, but if anybody's watching, um, this is because Bill Lewis expressed a number of committees he'd be yes. willing to serve on. And now we can, when we do finish these appointments, uh, we will certainly revisit Bill for those other committees. For the other committees, that's right. Yes. yes. Okay. You've heard the motion. All in favor? 
Motion's carried. Okay, so that gives us the PAC for the meeting next week. The rest if, of the committee appointments we're going to delay. Till and the if meeting council's so inclined, that means Ma we're canceling Mayor. the January meetings of asset management and audit committee. If that, mm -hmm. if yeah. Yes. And PAB. And, and PAB. Oh, okay. Sorry, Mo. Councilor Feeney. I was just going to pro. I I I thought we would proceed with the um, the audit committee uh, appointments this evening, but if you'd prefer to defer. We can do that too, but I know, I'm not sure how much grief that's gonna cause uh, Luke and Dylan if we defer that meeting. We only have two two community members on on asset, that's on right. uh, the audit committee the audit meeting committee. of which um, of which Bill has added a lot of value in the previous uh, mandate. Yeah. Um, I think the fact that there are only two people who expressed an interest in the audit committee would make it a pretty oh. easy decision. So if you, if you want to do want. that, that's I think, do you I, do that I think I'd propose that um, Bill Lewis and, and Bill Haley uh, be appointed to the asset management, pardon me, the audit committee. Daryl. Daryl Haley. Bill Haley is a rock and roll star. That's right. <laughs> Daryl Haley. Daryl Haley. Okay. So do we have a seconder? Deputy Mayor seconds. We have a motion to appoint. Daryl Haley and Bill Lewis to the audit committee. All in favor? Motions carried. Okay. All right. So then I'm just going to recap. PAB and asset management will be deferred, which uh, as far as asset management goes, um, I, I just want to point out that, you know, we're starting kind of a new program. It's no problem to start it in February. We'll have even more stuff to present to the committee when yeah. we meet. Uh, the work is still happening in the background, so. Yeah. And I think we just have one returning member on the Asset Management Committee. Yeah, I was excited to see a lot of new interest there, so, yeah, so, so that'll faces. be good when we get Yeah, okay. So are we good with that for now, Councillor Carver? Uh, yes, I, I would like to make a motion that we, um, that Council recommends a review of the whole uh, selection process um, and that a working group be set up uh, for that purpose. Uh, so should I make that motion now or wait till next next time? I guess it just, uh, wait till... we're, yeah, maybe wait till we finish the appointment process for the year at the next meeting. Okay, we'll okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what did I do with my Councilor gender? Wilson has his hand up there. Councilor Wilson. I was just going to suggest, <clears throat> thank you, just going to suggest that when we consider uh, uh, Councilor Carver's motion, uh, whenever that comes up, that we include uh, the possibility of including term limits on these appointments so that people aren't perpetual members of the same committee. Well, th so these are two-year appointments, but you mean a limit to being reappointed to the committee after two years? That's what the term limits are, yes. <laughs> I, I think with the exception of Bob Morris's requirement to be on the Cemetery Commission, that's not a bad idea. I'm not sure how many other people want to step into Bob's shoes on a Well, they'd have to buy the business. Cases. They'd have to buy his whole business to take right. that seat. <laughs> Which enough. is for sale. Here you go. Okay. So Councillor Carvery will hold that motion till after the process is finished by the next meeting and then we'll entertain that one. Um, we had item number seven, two items for discussion with Bernadette Jordan. Bernadette is going to be joining us on Friday morning, I think, 12 o'clock, 1230 CAO. When is 1130. She? 1130. And she usually comes in with a a collection of things that she wants to talk about. Uh, in particular, it, it'll be her role in, in the federal parliament. Uh, but there's always an opportunity for us to raise issues with her, particularly, understandably, those that are a focus of the federal government. Although we do have some uh, federal government programs that the funding is not being forthcoming because of decisions at the provincial level. But I think this, there was a message had gone out asking councillors if they had any issues they would like to address to 
Bernadette on Friday. Um, we try to give her a bit of a heads up as to what the questions might be. So she's not blindsided when she shows up. Uh, so, so I also note in the package we included just because it was the last correspondence we sent yeah. a list of ICIP priorities, which is still current because unfortunately we haven't had a funding window since we sent that letter. So I think that's a good starting place. And, and then, yeah, Mr. Mayor, we're looking for anything else that anyone wants to mm -hmm. raise that we could let Bernadette know. If there are no other items that are raised tonight, then that's that's fine. We just go into the conversation uh, without any um, heads up. But if there were any, I, I would or say if that. if not tonight, you can always forward them to uh, to the CAO, yeah, to the clerk, or to me, and we'll, yeah, we'll get them on the list. The councillor, now, yeah, Mr. CAO, have we heard anything from that funding we had applied for with regard to energy efficiency, like with regard to the uh, community hall for the station? We haven't heard anything. Um, so that went through Department of Energy and uh, I, I asked them if there was any news recently. So I was talking with them and, and they said they didn't have any news at this time. Um, but I don't know whether that is uh, because it's Department of Energy um, probably is with the province and we can ask Bernadette, but she'll probably say they haven't received any of the applications yet under that program because mm -hmm. the province is the gatekeeper. Unfortunately. Anyone else? Deputy Mayor? Um, I have a sort of sensitive question that I probably need your guidance and thoughts around it. Um, uh, as, as uh, I guess, our representative with the federal government and uh, her portfolio ha having been fisheries and, and the way that all, all panned out, uh, it su suddenly has some links to some work uh, uh, that has come up in conversation here and uh, some work I'm involved in with the town of Bridgewater around anti-racism. And I sort of wondering to myself um, how appropriate it might be to, to ask her, because I haven't, I haven't seen her uh, with the outcome of what happened to the fisheries. I haven't seen or heard from her, uh, her stance around uh, the whole issue and 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 what what she thinks would be would be an appropriate way forward, which to a certain extent for me reads that she um, she 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 she's either guarded with what she thinks or she she supports what the commercial fishery folks were doing, um, and and I was wondering how appropriate it would be for me to raise that as a concern and maybe say that, maybe ask her to, to actively do something that sort of indicates that she, uh, she does not support racism. Uh, and I guess being, being one of the very few uh, folks of color on council, uh, I would feel that that's something that uh, I need to raise with her, but um uh, I also will not want to do that and impact Mahombe negatively. Uh, so uh, looking for some guidance from you folks and uh, thoughts around that. Is, is there a particular aspect of her portfolio that you feel is establishes a, a link with uh, as a racist um, policy, for, uh, Deputy Mayor? Or? You're on mute, sir. Sorry, uh, the, the way in which, from my perspective, DFO uh, seems to be handling then the whole episode, from my perspective, uh, sort of speaks to either, it's either mismanagement or intentionally uh, doing things so that uh, in, Indigenous folks can, cannot exercise their rights uh, uh, for, for minimal livelihood. And, and, and maybe that's that's what I see, but that's not what's happening in the background. So there, there, there've been questions around, in particular, uh, her commitment to having, I guess, the nation-to-nation -nation dialogue with the First Nations folks. And and uh, I think the last the last uh, uh, piece that I had was the uh, First Nations chief actually pulled out of conversations with her. Mm. And, and went 
decided to to seek another minister. And so, as, as somebody who lives in this area, that is a little bit concerning in the sense that the person who represents me in parliament cannot really engage with First Nations. What what's the blockage there? Why why the the public face of it is she's the one who's a stumbling block. It might not be the case. Mm -hmm. Good to get an understanding why that's the case. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Wilson. <coughs> Thanks. Um, first of all, I'm on, um, I'm on the deputy mayor's side when it comes to this issue, but it is also an extraordinarily complex issue. Um, but what I wanted to say was, I, my sense is that this meeting with the minister is a meeting of official representatives of the town of Mahone Bay with our minister and, and our MP. And as such, we should be confining the discussion to issues that affect the town. Okay. Just if for no other reason than just merely bringing this issue up could either result in a 30 second meeting or a three hour one, mm. probably nothing in between. And I, I think as you suggest, it is a very complex issue. It certainly has played out in, uh, in the media, in the press, and there's been a lot of conflict. And I, I agree with the deputy mayor. We, I don't think we have seen a, a clear direction from the federal government on how to uh, approach this uh, situation. I, I'm a little uncomfortable that ours is not the forum uh, to discuss that in, other than to let her know that possibly as a counselor, we support the position of the Indigenous community. But to take her to task as a minister of the Crown uh, in looking for her solution, not sure if it's the right venue for that, but Councillor Feeney. Uh, you know, his, I think over the last few years when we've had this really extraordinary opportunity to meet with the, not only the MP, but as a sitting cabinet member, um, it's afforded kind of a, you know, flow of information that's not necessarily always on the record because it's not a formal uh, public meeting. So, I mean, my sense of things is, is that the minister is very adept at answering questions that she's able to answer and very adept at not answering questions she doesn't want to answer. Um, very, well, she's very you know, she's very, she's very skilled. She's very skilled at that. It's unfortunate that she's not here in person because I do believe that, um, you know, the questions that the deputy mayor asks, um, I have not a doubt in my mind that uh, in a quiet moment, there'd be a more, you know, fulsome answer um, versus on a public, on a, on a taped Zoom meeting. I'm assuming just to clarify on Friday, this is not a public meeting and, and we won't be streaming the conversation. It's just a, a, a conversation between the, the minister and the council. That's right. That's true. And, and our intention here, and I think we established this last year, is that we can't have that meeting be public, but we can have our conversation about what topics will be discussed in public. And that way the public at least understands what council's going into the session with. Right. So, I mean, my, my, I guess under the theme of feedback, uh, Deputy Mayor, I'd say that, you know, we'll, I'm sure there'll be quite a bit of comp focus on, um, on the uh, specifics of the town mandate. But uh, over the course of an hour, you know, sure there'll be an op there'll be an opening to introduce that topic. Okay. Councillor Burdick? This does seem like a good opportunity to talk about that. It's, it is important. It's actually maybe one of the things that she's known most for recently is, is her portfolio. And people have... Uh, opinions about it and our, our, the population here has, has feelings about it that need to be, you know, it can be clearly stated. I'm a new person here too on council, but my, my feeling is that um, if there are a few things that are being brought up, 
it could be brought up. She may or may not respond to it specifically, uh, but it is a valuable thing to do and an important thing to do, I think. Even to make the statement that you said, uh, Mayor, which is, which is a strong statement, uh, actually, and a really good one and an important important one because to say that we support a, as a town council um, indigenous fishers is kind of that's a big statement to make and I'd be very proud of us <laughs> if we did that and it could be a, that simple too but I, I think that it would be do you feel deputy mayor um, you're you're bringing this up and I think as deputy mayor if you if it feels right, it is important that you be the person who say say it to her. But it, I wonder what your comfort level is. So, my, I can raise it with anyone. I, I I don't have a problem raising it. I think the the issue for me is not is is we are we are we are a team, and and I wouldn't want you to to be uncomfortable me raising a topic that I know is always uncomfortable for everyone. So so that's why I wanted to, to I guess to, to to get a gauge of where you folks are at, and I. For me, it's not about taking her to task. For me, for me, when I when I think about her and being in a public position, I think there is opportunity for her. If I don't know if it's redeem herself or redeem her, her, her uh, in the way in which things seem to have fallen. I, I've, I've met her one once or twice, and I don't, I don't believe she's a <laughs> she's a racist or she or she she doesn't uh, she doesn't care for indig indigenous folks. They are, they are probably compelling things that are, have caused her to, 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 I guess, be in the position she is now. It'd be great to understand those and then to get an understanding of where she's at. I think she, she can, uh, I don't know if it's redeeming herself or she can find a way to, to show that she supports uh, anti-racism efforts by supporting things that are happening in the community towards that direction. And maybe that opportunity needs to be delivered to her, to her, to her I guess, her desk or uh, um, her as a person. So uh, I'll, 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 I'll think about it. I think in, if, if there's any, the minimal will probably be uh, basically what uh, the mayor has suggested. I think we need to, in some way, shape or form, to convey the element that uh, uh, indigenous lives matter. If, if I can put it that way, so that she she understands that her community is uh, uh, that she represents is supportive of indigenous uh, uh, basic livelihoods. But I, I don't want to take up too much time with this, so mm. we can. Well, we got a couple of days to kind of grow at it. So yeah, <clears throat> is there anything else that anyone feels would be? Reasonable to bring up on Friday? Okay. CAO, did but you want Councilor to add? Councillor Burdick has her hand up. I don't know if. Oh! I, I need she to adjust. To. I need to turn off my mute faster, I think. I, I put my hand up sometimes. But I, I do, you did you point need out. A high that, contrast background. <laughs> yeah, this is too. Yeah. Who knows what's going on behind me right now? Um, it did seem like the, the straight pipe thing specifically is a good one to uh, follow up on and it doesn't have to be, you know, it could just be, you know, we, we received this in June, uh, right? That was the, in June was when it went out. I think because she also has an association with um, like in Bridgewater with uh, when Stella Bowles, um, you know, was very successful with her campaign. And, and then I, I believe uh, MP sort of uh, also publicized that. It might be a really nice thing for her to also be attached to that here in Mahone Bay if uh, to, to help move that along. But anyway, bringing that up for sure. Okay. Mayor, just before we leave the topic, last year we as a council um, did a quick review of the capital priorities, not the, you know, 50 item list, the, the top five list that specifically aligns with our submissions to mm -hmm. get federal and provincial government support. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in some of the commentary in, in the, in the note. 
about this meeting. So is that just, I just so everyone on council is on the same page on what that priority list is. Dylan, just the, you know, I, I assume like that priority, you know, so the, the, the water and sewer from Long Hill Road to the end of, to the Blockhouse town boundary and, you know, that prioritization list. Maybe if you would mind just um, re sending that back out again. Um, I think we did have a motion of council one time to, to ratify that top five hit list. I just, I think if we're going to be in that meeting with the minister, we should ask her for something. And if asking can, it could be in the sense of here's our, here's our list of priorities to make you aware of what they are. And it would be great to be able to put a date next to the day we made the submissions because uh, there's nothing like a little, you know, moral suasion here. Some of these submissions have been in 18 months already be mm. before government. So, uh, but I know that we, like, I'm sure in the next del budget deliberation, things will change and things will shift in and out. But, you know, I think when, when Councillor Burdick mentioned straight pipes, I'm pretty sure that that is on the list, uh, maybe item three, item four or five. Mm. Yeah, the uh, attachment in the council package for this item is essentially pulling from that, but it, it doesn't list the lower priority ones. It only hits on those top those top right. items. Uh, but yeah, if, uh, you're right that the uh, uh, upgrade of uh, and replacement of lines uh, around Long Hill and serving the new nursing home development was the top. And then um, in terms of line replacement or extension, then the straight pipes were the next. And the straight pipes are, you know, relatively small scale projects as well, relative to some of the other ones that are that are on the books. Mm. Um, and we last time we pitched as a um, let's just combine this and say, you know, well, it may not be exactly the same thing, but we're doing the work at the same time. So let's, you know, and uh, if we get a window, we'll have some guidance around whether to combine, whether to separate or we haven't had a window since we sent this letter in July. Like I'm a personally, I'm very, I'm very comfortable with that list and its current formatting. Um, I think it has a lot of logic. It's just to be, to be fair to every, all of the new council, you know, we, we as a group haven't gotten together and reviewed that list. So that list is just a legacy, not necessarily representative of the thinking of this council, but I, I do think it's a good list that I wouldn't, I wouldn't propose making any changes at this point. Okay. Well, if there's, if anybody comes up with anything, by all means, send it along, and we'll have a list for for Friday morning. Huh. Okay, we're getting down there. Committee reports. Uh, there are four. Uh, I know that the uh, Lunenburg County Remo Guide to Emergency Management for Elected Officials has got a um, motion attached to it that we should have embraced some time ago. Yeah, they're Does looking for feedback on or approval of the document. So if, uh, yes. if anybody has any feedback, that's welcome, but also mm -hmm. otherwise we uh, the request is for a motion to uh, approve that document to go back to the um, Remo board as a conveying the approval of all of the councils, which is required before Remo could adopt it. Yeah, and just let me check. Yeah, I don't think there's any motions in the other three. So if, if no one has any questions about the Heritage Advisory Committee, the Lunenburg County Senior Safety Program, or the South Shore Housing Action Coalition. We'll go to that Remo uh, guide and uh, consider the approval of council for the document. This was in the, we first saw it as part of the Remo training uh, that new councilors were given. I will so move. Okay, Councilor Carr moves uh, that we uh, accept the um, emergency document as presented. Do we have a seconder? Councilor Now, on the question, all in favor, motions carried.
Okay. Uh, nothing on the other three reports. Okay. Councillor uh, Carver, your notice of motion, please. You're on mute. Yeah, yes, yep, yes. I'd like to uh, make notice of motion that I'll bring a motion to uh, the next council meeting. Um, asking staff to uh, draft a policy <clears throat> pertaining to the relationship of council and CAO. This is uh, something that is now man mandatory in uh, Ontario for all municipalities. And whereas we have a code of ethics that for staff and a code of conduct for members of council, there's not much <clears throat> to to guide what happens in the interrelationship and that mm -hmm. mutually dependent relationship that um, is ongoing. Um, and so I will bring a motion in the next meeting uh, to that effect. And okay. I will bring some information and, and background documentation. Is there a possibility of getting that background information as part of the council package? Which oh, follow? yes. Oh, absolutely. It, it has yeah. to be part of the council package. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. That concludes our published agenda. We have one more uh, piece, a closed session. Is there anybody still watching? Is there? Do we have no. any questions from the public? No. No questions from the public, Your Worship. Okay. Good. That they're 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 all happy. They really enjoyed their their uh, three and a half hours. Um, so entertain a motion to go in camera. So I move. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Burdick. All in favor? Thank you. We will now disconnect our feed to the public. Citizens, thank you for staying with us all this time. If you have any questions, you might contact.